Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Happy Friday night. Welcome to No Offense, All Offense. Uh, I am stand-up comedian and pop culture vulture Jolene Lunzer here to take a comedic roast look at uh, the pop culture stories, reality shows, uh, trending topics, all the things. Tonight we are going to be talking, um, roasting, providing a very biased commentary about the Vanderpump Rules after show, which seems to be the... Uh, it seems to be quite the thing to watch this season. Um, as I've been saying, more entertaining than this actual season of Vanderpump Rules, which has been pretty disappointing the direction it's taken. If you watch my channel, you know why. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at some of the things that were have been said in the after show this past week. We're going to be taking a look at some more Bravo television pop culture news. And we're also going to update... Uh, what's going on in Diddy Gate, in the world of Diddy. So we have lots to talk about. So grab your favorite beverage. I have a little bit of a Diet Coke left and some water. So hopefully you're having a wonderful Friday night wherever you are in the world. Make sure you smash that like if you haven't already. If you want to support the channel further than liking or subscribing, you can always send a super chat while we're live. I'll highlight your comment. You can also send a super thanks after the video post. And I want to shout out some of my recent after yesterday's video. Um, I got some super thanks. So I want to say thank you to Joe King, uh, Linda, uh, Jamie, uh, Elizabeth. So thank you so very much. I also received uh, some Venmo cash apps and PayPal's. So thank you to those of you who sent those through and we got some new members here on YouTube. So if you want to do any of that, all the information is in the description of this video. Um, also, some of the information is right at the bottom of the screen. If you would like. Hello, everyone. Yes, yes. Hope you had a fun dinner last night. Thank you, DC. I did. Uh, we weren't impressed with the restaurant we went to. We thought it was gonna be pretty good because it was like a seafood restaurant and they had a rooftop patio, but then we didn't get to sit outside because it was super windy and it's the desert. So it's when it's windy, there's this dust city. Um, so we had fun with our friends, but the food, I had a tuna, ahi tuna dish, and it was ginger rice. Was it ginger? Jasmine rice, ginger on the tuna with carrots. Hype my husband shell for his birthday. Oh, I got to tell you guys something in addition to that. I, what did he have? I think he had a Chilean sea bass, salmon, something. Um, then they brought out, without asking us what we were celebrating, they brought brought out a piece of like cheesecake with a candle, which I was like, oh my God, that's so sweet. I love when restaurants do that, but we didn't tell them it was anyone's birthday. I mean, you could tell we were celebrating because there were presents on the table. And so our server came out and she was like, what are you guys celebrating? And she already had the candle. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice. It's his birthday. It's my husband's 40th birthday. She's like, oh, happy birthday. And then we get the bill and they charged us for the cheesecake, $13 for a piece. And I'm like, but we didn't we didn't ask for this. I mean, <laughs> I always thought maybe I'm thinking like TGI Fridays mentality, but we just paid for it. Cause we're like, all right. Uh, but I've never experienced <laughs> where they just forced a dessert on you, which I'm all for forcing desserts, but then making you pay. Um, so that was weird. I've, I've never had that. Ex they did Shawnee. They did. <laughs> Because we were like, oh, my God, that's so nice. She lit the candle. We sang happy birthday. Um, I have my husband, Chelsea, in the chat saying boo. And then they charged us $13 for the piece of cheesecake. And I was like, okay, thanks. I, I mean, we didn't ask for that. Our friends didn't ask for that. Uh, they go and broke because their food is mid. Yeah, I think that's um, looks like I my husband, Chell learned a new word. He must have been on the Reddit. Uh, he knows mid. He knows mid. Yes, and uh, I'm going to send it to Daryl. Yeah, well, <laughs> that wasn't very nice of them. But we just, I mean, neither of us said anything because we're like, whatever. We're, <laughs> we, we had a nice time. But it's, yes, very tacky. Very tacky. Um, I got to tell Nana about that because my mom's going to be like, you didn't say anything? She's going to be so disappointed in me. But sometimes it's just not worth it. Honestly, sometimes it's just not worth it sometimes it's just, it was, it was, the cheesecake was actually good. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually tasty, you know? So, um, 
Yes. Butterfly says, uh, I am a former server and I used to buy dessert and give it to myself. Oh, you are so sweet. If they were having a celebration, I would never bring a dessert and then charge them for it. Yes. I served for years and, uh, in college after I graduated college, I served until I was about like 26, 27. And then I also would have like a day job and, but it kept serving because the money was so good. So at night and weekends and, um, I never did that either. But uh, Anna says, Naimam. Um. Uh, there, it was Pacifica Seafood Restaurant, <laughs> Palm Desert. Um, NBD, if they're listening, no big deal. Thank you. Your food is mid, um, but it's, it costs more than it deserves to cost. <laughs> right? I thought, Jeannie, I thought the same thing. I thought you usually give a birthday dessert for free. Or you bring, would you like? To order dessert there was no option they were just like here's your dessert and here's how much then they were like here it is on the bill and we're like oh okay okay mid 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 all right now sometimes i feel like i'll say something sometimes i'm just you know as sassy as i am on youtube in real life sometimes i just it's not worth it i get all my stuff out here and then i just go smile and go hmm, oh well hopefully it's Going to a good cause. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. All right, we got to get talking. Um, let me know what you guys want to start with. Do you want to start with the Vanderpump Rules after show roast, or do you want to start with the news on Diddy? Um, put it in the chat, and we will do a majority rules. And while you guys are voting in the chat, I would like to say thank you. Thank you. You know, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. But yeah, I'm glad I was able to name them. Name them. That what? Name them. Well, name what em. you did was ridiculous. Name them. Uh, not having name. Uh, well, be quiet. So name let em. me talk, Jesus. Name them. Name them. I mean, that'll that'll never get old. Name them. Name them. Name them. Name them. I love it. Okay, so I'll give you guys just a couple more seconds there to cast your vote. Let me see if I can, what am I pulling over here? Do I want this? I had something from Law and Crime I wanted to share, but I don't know if I can find it here. That looks like something of Lala Rand. I have so many Vanderpump Rules things on my computer. It's, it's a little embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing. All right, is this it? No, nope, that's Sheena. No, nope, that's Randall. No, no, no. We're just going through all of them. No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> I didn't transfer it over. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, looks like we have a lot of comments. Okay, people are like, Diddy, Diddy done, Diddy done, Dealer's Choice, VPR, VPR, VPR. Oh, we got more. We got a lot of VPR. So, oh, Nana. Oh, Nana, you, yeah, sorry, Nana, I did not say a thing. Nana says, just say not a $13 cheesecake. I didn't get a chance to, Nana. I did not get a chance to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, JL, uh, uh, JL uh, uh, tell me if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I apologize. What's Jolene's sign? She's hilarious. I'm an Aquarius, Avi, Avi. Look at the mismatch colors. I'm an Aquarius, yeah. We like a lot of attention. Okay. I'm just going to start with Diddy since we started with Vanderpump yesterday. And a lot of you put dealer's choice. So, and my mom says Diddy. So we got to start with Diddy. All right. Um, you guys, Diddy, Diddy, do, Diddy, Diddy, don't. This Diddy stuff is going to be something that is going to, unfortunately, keep feeding us uh, in the pop culture realm and then the news realm and the crime realm for quite some time. OK, now uh, the newest news we have coming out is Diddy's uh, they've been named in their lawsuit. All right. Uh, oh, goodness, you guys, this it's it's not looking good. It's not. Uh, let me pull this up here. So we know there's already been, you know, we have um, the Cassie lawsuit, which was settle, um, settled. We have a couple other lawsuits that. Um, are like Jane Doe lawsuits. We also have the Rodney Jones lawsuit that was recently updated. And now we have another lawsuit. And this time it includes 
another one of Diddy's sons. Okay. So previously they had um, included, I think Rodney Jones had included Diddy's um, son, Justin, and that is Diddy's oldest son. And, um, and Justin had been named in a couple things. There was a shooting at Chalice Studios that Rodney Jones says he heard and somewhat witnessed. He had photographs of the aftermath in this bathroom in the studio where he heard G-U-N shots. You know, some things we have to spell because YouTube will immediately either take your stream down or demonetize it for saying English language words. And, uh, Justin had a friend named G. I think he's, I don't know if he's his friend anymore because allegedly uh, Diddy or Justin or Diddy and Justin might have shot him. And Rodney Jones in, in his lawsuit said that he um, witnessed this, like hearing it. And he said that Diddy was basically like, no one say I was here. <laughs> so, I mean... It, it's not a good thing. Um, his exact words in the lawsuit when it came to this uh, Justin um, and Diddy possibly shooting Justin's friends is uh, Mr. Jones says he was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when he heard G.U.N. shots ring out. Mr. Jones recalls hearing multiple pew pew shots. OK, the pow pows. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and feared that he would be shot next. And this is directly from his lawsuit that uh, these claims are coming from. Mr. Jones, uh, Lil Rod, the, you know, the producer that was working on the Love Album with, with Diddy, who has a lot of allegations in his lawsuit that are next level crazy, but uh, seem pretty believable now, but all alleged at this point. Mr. Jones genuinely believed that he would be pew-pewed next. Uh, that he, through the door due to how close he was. So he was saying out he was so close to the shooting. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom at the Chalice Studios. Upon information and belief, when the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and Justin Combs exited. So Diddy exit. Now this is, you know, uh, Lil Rod here on the left. This is from his lawsuit and the claims he's making about Diddy and his oldest son, Justin, which is uh, very serious claims because we know Diddy has previously been um, involved, you know, the 1999 shooting. There's, you know, now there's all these questions opening up like, well, who did pay for Tupac to get shot? You know, um, all kinds of, uh, of this kind of pow-pow um, violence has followed Diddy through his career, okay? So um, after the shooting ended, you know, they're all gathered around. He, um, the door opened, Diddy and Justin Combs exited. G, who was allegedly Justin's friend, was lying on the restroom floor in the fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his torso and leg and hip area. Ugh. Everyone stood around looking upon G, frustrated by the lack of aid to Mr. G, R to G. Mr. Jones dropped everything, ran to G, and immediately began placing pressure on G's pew-pew uh, wound to his torso. Ooh, that sounds, this sounds just like a freaking nightmare, all right? And then uh, Mr. Combs gave strict instructions, according to Rodney Jones, to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the pow-powing. He also said... Uh, he also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was pow powed standing outside the studio by a drive by assailant. All of this sounds eerily familiar, unfortunately, when it comes to the world of Diddy. So, so Diddy was like, I wasn't here. I didn't do it. It didn't happen here in this bathroom where Rodney Jones says it happened. It actually happened outside and it was a rando. Mr. Jones has several cor corroborating witnesses who spoke this, uh, uh, who spoke anonymously because they feared retaliation from Mr. Combs. They have agreed to speak publicly when subpoenaed. So apparently there are witnesses to this in addition to Rodney Jones who have agreed to speak publicly if subpoenaed according to his lawsuit. Mr. Jones has, this is the craziest part, you guys. 
Rodney Jones, little Rod Jones says he has the clothing he wore that day. And obviously there was no Tide Pods involved because he has it and he believes it may still have G's blood stains and DNA. Oh my God. I mean, this is just, it's literally the things of, of nightmares. You know, it, it just keeps getting worse and worse. Okay. So in addition to that, Justin is also allegedly one of the um, people um, who would bring the possible very young to minor victims to Diddy's parties, freak offs at his home. These are allegations by Rodney Jones. <sighs> so not good for Justin. Well, now, and uh, it's probably not also good for his brother, Christian Combs. Now, Christian Combs is uh, younger than Justin, has a different mother than Justin. This would be Kim, the late Kim Porter, um, her son. And he has now been accused of essay in a new lawsuit. So when they say that more things are coming, more things continue to come out about this story. So Justin, who literally could be Diddy's doppelganger, um, is now in a new lawsuit. Okay. And this is a picture of Justin here. And this is according to CNN. All right. So Christian Combs, uh, son of rapper, and he calls himself King. I think that's his, uh, his entertainment name. So Justin Combs, son of, son of rapper and producer and businessman, impossible freak off freak nasty. I added that little part. Sean Diddy Combs is accused of essay in a new lawsuit that names both men. So not only does it name Christian Combs, Diddy's son with Kim Porter, but it also names Diddy. The 31 page lawsuit was filed in Los Angeles Superior Court on Thursday, according to an attorney for the plaintiff. And she's, she's naming, she, her name is involved. This isn't a Jane Doe. Her name is Grace O. Uh, Marque or Marse, uh, Marche. So Grace, uh, so O. Marche, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. We'll just say Grace. Uh, worked as a crew member and bartender on a yacht leased by Sean Combs and his family in December 2022, according to the lawsuit. The experience was sold as a wholesome family excursion, but turned into a hedonistic environment, the lawsuit says. The suspected S workers and other celebrities were often brought aboard. In the early morning of December 28th, 2022, Christian Combs, pictured here, pressured Grace to drink a shot of tequila, and shortly thereafter, he assaulted her, the lawsuit says. Grace believes the tequila, which she says Christian Combs brought aboard, may have been laced with the D-R-U-G-S, with some illegal drugs, according to the lawsuit. I guess they could have been, like, legal in that they were prescribed to her. I don't know if it would be, like, the date rape drug. I'm not right. I'm, I'm not sure. Sean Combs is not accused of essay in the lawsuit, but is included on allegations of liability and aiding and abetting. Aaron Dyer, an attorney for Sean and Christian Combs, said in a statement to CNN that they had not seen this woman's claims, but believe the lawsuit contains manufactured lies. It's becoming very interesting how many people Diddy is accusing of lying. There sure are, according to Diddy, a lot of liars out there making up very similar lies about Diddy. In this lawsuit is the latest in a series filed against Sean Combs and follows searches by federal investigators at his home in Los Angeles and the Miami area last week. The previous lawsuits accused him of a range of sexual misconduct and other illegal activities. The record or the recording industry mogul had denied all of the allegations. This is, he just keeps deny, deny, deny. But when do we say where there's smoke, there's fire. And this fire is definitely, um, burning, uh, and it's burning uh, very hot and, uh, just some really sick things that are coming out. Uh, I'm going to pull up a picture here of Diddy and his son performing in September, 2023. So here is Diddy and his son, Christian Combs, 
performing at the MTV Music Video Awards at Prudential Center on September 12th, 2023 in Newark, New Jersey. The lawsuit cites audio recording. Oh, God, there's just so many recordings involved in all these lawsuits and or all you know all these allegations that Diddy had recording devices in his home where he recorded people without their knowledge and allegedly that's what Homeland Security and the feds were going in one of the things they were looking for was maybe some of these tapes some of these recordings hoping that they hadn't either been uh you know damaged distributed hoping that they could obtain some of this stuff that they've heard so much about in these civil lawsuits, okay? The lawsuit cites an audio recording from a makeshift recording studio on the yacht, which Grace said is where the alleged assault began. According to a partial transcript included in the lawsuit, Grace was being pressured to take a shot and asked Christian Combs, are you drugging me? With Combs answering, take the shot. CNN has not obtained or reviewed the audio recordings. Later that night, Christian Combs cornered Grace in a room and became physical and extremely aggressive, the lawsuit states. Combs grabbed Grace by the arm and attempted to force himself on her, the filing continues, and stopped only when another yacht employee entered the room. Photos included in the court filing appeared to show bruises on the plaintiff's forearm. Following the alleged assault, Grace's mental and physical health deteriorated. Uh, according to the lawsuit, she began suffering from anxiety and panic attacks, among other issues, the lawsuit says. The lawsuit is seeking unspecified damages. So just when you think they can't get sued anymore, they do. Now, it's interesting um, and disturbing that the uh, drugging um, of women and people is brought up because in many interviews um, done by former security, uh, you know, Gene Deal has done a lot of interviews. <sighs> uh, it has been brought up that there was that people have, have seen Diddy kind of Cosby some women, allegedly we'll say allegedly, um, and that they, at the time, maybe, you know, there was a, a certain instance that was being described where pills were almost being thrown into women's mouths and then drinks allegedly were, um, there were certain drinks that some of his friends or people that worked for bad boy were told, don't, uh, don't drink that. Like they knew that those beverages um, we're for the ladies, we're for the women. So really, really, um, scary stuff. Uh, so it, it's interesting that that was brought up because I believe it was Mark Curry, uh, former bad boy artist, Mark Curry, uh, who's written a book. He's done multiple interviews about bad boy. He was a writer on many songs, um, while working for, for bad boy and was there for quite a long time. Um, he was the one who said, yeah, basically there was Bill Cosby going on before we knew it was Bill Cosby, you know? So it's not out of the realm of possibility from some of these interviews that Diddy and associates could have, um, drugged these people, whether they be men, women, um, their victims, allegedly. So that was brought up. Another thing that was brought up by Gene Deal. If you guys haven't checked out Gene Deal's interviews, he is a real character. Um, <laughs> he's, I've talked about him a little bit uh, before, but um, he's a former bodyguard of Sean uh, P. Diddy Combs, known for his association with Bad Boy Entertainment. And uh, he has done a lot of interviews and you can check these interviews out. Um, there's a YouTube channel called The Art of Dialogue where a lot of these uh, videos live and um, there's some other ones as well. So Gene Deal actually had an interesting theory that he was saying that he thinks Diddy might have been 
Now, this is what I got from it, that Diddy might have been a CI, a confidential informant, okay? Because if we look at what Diddy was able to get away with for so many years, similar to the Jeffrey Epstein, similar to the Harvey Weinsteins, um, in some of these cases, you could, I mean, conspiracy theory hat fully on, um, you, it, it's not, it's not hard to believe that maybe um, they could be kind of CIs, you know? And uh, then... I think Gene was alluding to who then did Diddy piss off that uh, they know kind of where the bones are buried. They know the skeletons in the closet and now they're taking him down. But possibly since he was, you know, uh, around so many powerful people, I mean, Diddy ran in a billionaire boys club for a long time. And, you know, we talked about this on another no offense, all offense where he was, basically cold emailing billionaires and making deals that had never been seen before in the music industry, making huge brand deals, which then cemented him on another level for, um, you know, business within business, um, which basically made him a mogul, you know, him um, getting involved with his clothing line, Sean John and getting it on a professional basketball team and NBA, I think was it the Mavericks, getting Sean John on their uniforms, you know, making the uniforms for a basketball team, partnering with Ciroc, you know, a big alcohol company, partnering with the Estee Lauder company for his, um, his cologne, you know, he was really rubbing elbows with, you know, the one percenters with some pretty big names that we've uh, spoken about before. So, I mean, it could, it could be that somewhere along the line, he pissed off the wrong person and now they're coming for him or the fact that he has not been indicted yet. There's just all these speculations, you know, the fact that he hasn't been indicted yet, the fact that no charges, even though we, I saw today in the media, again, charges are coming soon. Nancy Grace even was like, and you know, if Nancy Grace says it, uh, she's like, charges are on their way. An indictment is in fact coming. But let's say it doesn't, was Diddy's work to kind of, you know, out bigger players within this game, for lack of a better word. Um, but I thought the, the CI... Uh, speculation of the CI theory was pretty interesting because uh, that would kind of keep him hidden, I guess, from them going after him um, if he was providing them enough information, enough people. And I didn't even know until Gene explained it that CIs can make money, you know, depending on the case. And if you, depending on how much, you know, whether it's, you know, drugs or, um, you know, weapons or things like that. And you're a confidential informant on that. You get like, I don't know if that's true for every state, but Gene was saying you get like a little percentage. They give you a little cut. I was like, Oh, I didn't know. I, I just thought CIs, a confidential informant would do that to keep themselves out of trouble. But maybe with Diddy, it got to the point where, you know, Maybe he pissed off the wrong people. And a lot of people are saying that um, Jay-Z's next and Ashton Kutcher. And I did not like hearing that Jay-Z was going to be next because I was like, no, I hated that for Beyonce. We'll see. You know, only time will tell. But apparently, allegedly, there's a lot of skeletons in the Jay-Z closet and Ashton Kutcher. That actually, after what happened with the Danny Masterson trial and him writing a letter to the judge on behalf of Danny Masterson. And remember the only person who didn't, I believe out of that cast of that 70s show, as far as like the main characters, I think was Topher Grace. And for years there was, you know, these rumors that Topher might be hard to work with, or he wasn't, you know, good friends with the other cast members. Well, maybe because he knew Wilder Valderrama's out there dating teenagers when he's a whole ass adult, maybe because Laura Prepon, Prepon, whatever her name was, was a damn Scientologist. And maybe because Danny, Danny Masterson was a whole uh, sexual assaulter. So maybe Topher just has better taste in friends that he didn't want to roll with these people, you know? So, uh, he was the only one, I believe, who did not write a letter in support of that monster, Danny Masterson. So it wouldn't surprise me with Ashton. But what is really creepy about Ashton Kutcher, let's just say right now it's just it's just speculation um, until 
we see, you know, an, any kind of real, you know, allegations come forth. But I believe Ashton is a part of um, a uh, and like a charity he might help running some kind of where they raise money for kids who are S trafficked or to prevent children from being S trafficked. So it would be really messed up, but they both creep me out at this point. They, I mean, after going and writing a letter to the judge for their friend, Danny Masterson, I don't care how good of a friend you are to me. If you are a convicted artist, a convicted sexual assaulter, I'm not writing you a letter. We're not friends anymore. Sorry. That's maybe just how I roll. So, um, okay. Yes. I think I remember that. Thank you for the record, your honor. I appreciate uh, that information. Yes. Uh, new here and welcome. Uh, just subscribe. Thank you for the subscription. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, Ashton stepped down from being the chair after supporting Danny. I mean, that was really messed up. If you are really going to support, um, women or children, um, from being, you know, uh, abused or S trafficked, uh, you probably don't want to be known to support a convicted sexual assaulter, a convicted artist. You probably don't want it uh, to know that, you know, you probably don't want to do that. Uh, my husband says the foundation that Kutcher runs was based on him going to an ex's house. Yes. And finding out that bad things happened to her. I remember that story, but now, now I have lots, I have so many questions now. I don't trust any of these people any of these people. I told my husband, I used to think all that Illuminati stuff, that's crazy. And I'm not saying I'm full, but it, this between us, it's sick. These entertainment people are, some of these people are very sick and very pedophilic. The whole thing. My husband and I were having a conversation today just about like the Britney Spears of it all. So we're talking about Britney and, you know, when baby one more time came out, we were teenagers. You know, I was maybe, maybe I was 19, 18. My husband was four years younger. So we were like, oh, you know, maybe we're, but looking at it now as a 40 year old, I'm like, she's like 15. Why would they sexualized her from the jump? And we know that a lot of these, you know, I haven't watched the Nickelodeon docuseries yet. I just, oh, it's, I haven't been able to bring myself to watch it. I've watched little clips, but I'll get there. Um, but we know from a lot of these, you know, child actors, the Corey Feldman's other pop stars, you know, there's a lot of very twisted, sick things that, uh, these adults and the exploitation of them, uh, and almost the pimping of them is, is really, really disgusting. And then now years later, people are like, oh my God, I can't believe Britney Spears is, you know, dancing naked on her Instagram. It's like, that's all she knows because the adults that were supposed to protect her, that's what they did. They threw her out there and they were like, you're only good when you're naked and selling records. You know, you're only good when we're sexualizing you. So it should be no surprise to anyone that that is literally all she knows now because she, she never got to just be a singer or an artist. She was exploited from a teeny tiny age. You know, it's very, very sad. Um, all of these stories are just horrific and seemingly all too common in Hollywood, in the entertainment industry, in the music industry, and just how sick and depraved these people are. I mean, if even half of these allegations against Diddy are true, that is demonic. Like he is yuck, totally music industry, hip hop's Jeffrey Epstein, allegedly. Okay. Um, Harvey Weinstein, like all the sickest See, for some reason, these gatekeepers, you know, this is systemic at this point, because where the frick are we learning this, that this is the route you have to go. And this is what you have to do when you're a gatekeeper. It's almost like, you know, Diddy allegedly, you know, we talk about this all the time started under Andre Harrell at Uptown Records, who started under Clive Davis. And, you know, allegedly Andre Harrell might have, uh, you know, asked for sexual favors from Diddy, not asked for, but maybe demanded, who knows? At the time, a very young um, freshman at Howard, Sean Diddy Combs, and only for then Diddy to go do that to people. And then who knows if it goes as high up as, you know, Clive Davis doing that to Andre Harrell. So it seems to be this, the system is jacked. That's what uh, I'm saying. You know, uh, where's Weinstein? Is he in jail? I don't know. I can't even look at that man's face. 
He is disgusting. Uh, Desiree, thank you so much for the first. Or did I? I think I might have got another super chat. I missed it. But thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, just got home from celebrating my birthday. It was yesterday and excited to catch up on your live. Well, happy birthday, Desiree S. Uh, I hope you had a super fun time. And remember, it's not just a birthday. It's a birth week. It's a birthday week. So you get to celebrate all week. You're important. You're special. And make everyone bow down to you. Okay. So, um, yeah, don't, uh, don't just, it, it, it ain't over. Okay. Like the wonderful band frog pond from, where are they from? I think they're from Missouri. Uh, they have a song called it's not over. Mm -mm. So your birthday's not over. So happy birthday, Pamela. I'm sorry. I missed your super chat here, but Pamela, thank you for the super chat saying hi from Reseda. Hello. Visiting a friend with my guy. We're a long way from North Carolina. Yes, you are. You're from, from North Carolina. Oh my goodness. Hopefully you're having fun. Have a nice time. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Yes. Um, happy birthday. You guys are so sweet putting your happy birthdays. I wish I had my, let me see if I have my little busy blue in Tay the Bay singing. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. It's, oh, I do. Okay. We have a little happy birthday song for Desiree. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. It's your 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 birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. Oh, I love that. Tay the Bay, uh, Busy Blue, one of my besties, and their dog, Luke, singing, happy birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I think I just ruined it, but uh, there you go. Yes, end up. It does look to be seem that Diddy is a pathological predator, but listening to these like Gene Deal interviews, these Mark Curry interviews, I mean, it seems like since the beginning of them knowing him, Diddy has had control issues. He has had this sense of needing to be in control and control others to the point where obviously it's very, very unhealthy and predatory. Um, and, you know, Gene Deal said that he had seen Diddy um, be physically abusive to women like Kim Porter and uh, maybe didn't witness it as it happened, but definitely was there um, and saw that, you know, I think one of his claims was that he had broken Kim Porter's nose. So really, really disturbing. And now we're just, I mean, now the floodgates are open and people, um, which I'm glad that people are feeling comfortable coming forward with their stories. Cause really all it does take is a couple people to open the door and then other victims can come forward and hopefully we'll get some damn indictments and, uh, charges because, I am tired of watching this man run around Miami smiling. I think I just saw a video and I don't know if it's recent, but they were claiming it was recent and it was Diddy riding bikes with Stevie J and they were riding spider style. No, they weren't riding spider style, but they were riding bikes in Miami. And I'm thinking, go home. Go, I, I mean, get on your knees, pray for, forget, do something. But the last thing you should be doing is having like a fun little bike ride. If that was uh, recent and people were taking pictures of with him. So I'm hoping it wasn't recent, but they were passing it along like it was recent. And then the New York Post and TMZ, you know, they were reporting that um, Diddy's twin daughters he had with um, the late Kim Porter uh, was hanging out with LeBron's son. So I don't know. They said, according to TMZ, Diddy might be in hot water at the moment, but his daughters were in much calmer waters a world away this week, enjoying their spring break with LeBron James' teenage son. 16-year-old Bryce James was featured in a video that's making the rounds online, which shows him and his pal, uh, Boogie Johnson, enjoying the ocean in Turks and Caicos. Oh, Turks and Caicos. Ooh, that's fancy. I've never been there. And in the little dance compilation that got posted and was then deleted, you can see Jesse and Delilah Combs in the mix as well. Ugh. I just, you know, your mind goes to so many places because you know now with Diddy's sons being named in lawsuits and these allegations against them, you only can think that they, if these things are true, that uh, they themselves, what they must have been um, privy to or witness of from a very young age and then taught was okay. And were they themselves victimized and then became, you know, predators? It's, it's a very, 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 um, sick, sick cycle. And the more we're learning about, you know, Justin Bieber alone, I forgot, I knew that Usher as a teenager lived 
with Diddy for a time. And he talked about on Howard Stern and said he would never send his kids to live with Diddy and do like the Diddy boot camp. But then he finds Justin Bieber on YouTube and sends Justin Bieber off with Diddy. And I'm like, oh, oh no. Uh, so now you think of all the issues that, you know, Justin Bieber has had through the years and all the people that have exploited him similar to a Britney Spears. And it's, it's very scary and it, it's really sick. And now all these little videos are coming out of interactions they've had. There was one video I saw where Justin looks pretty young. I mean, he always looks young, but this would have been years ago, probably, you know, pre Haley Bieber pre I'm assuming like adulthood where he's in the club um, with Diddy and some of the, I don't know, people associated with Diddy and they have a video and he appears to like come from either his face near the crotch of a man or bending down to a table that might have maybe some kind of substance allegedly where that you might accidentally go, you know, sniff. Uh, but either way he pops up and I'm like, uh, and then I found this little clip of Diddy and Bieber. Um, and it's just disturbing. Like who, what kind of parent would just give your kid to anybody that's not you? I don't care what kind of talent you think they have. You don't leave your children unsupervised, you know? And again, I'm not putting more onus on the parent than I am Diddy, who's allegedly the predator in a lot of these situations. But still, I mean, whether what we've learned from the, you know, the U.S. gymnastics with Larry, whatever his name is, that asshole who abused all the um, young women. And when, you know, they were when they were teenagers till, uh, you know, adulthood. Um, and unfortunately, even when their parents were right there, but I think it, it's scary and there's a fine line, the amount of trust you should be giving like these coaches and, and things like that, because a lot of, uh, unfortunately, a lot of sickos are drawn to industries where they have access to children, uh, you know, in order to victimize them. So really disturbing stuff, but this is a video I found of Diddy and Bieber and he looks like a damn baby and I just want his mom to come pick him up. Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. I'm signed to Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. I... Uh... He looked to me and maybe, you know, I'm, I'm definitely like my, my brain's going to bad places because of all these allegations against Diddy and all these things we're learning, but he does look scared and he's just a little kid. So it is very disturbing. Like Epic Turtle is saying, yes, the Olympic gymnastic girls who were so brave. And when they had to testify against Larry Nassar and when they were strong enough, I mean, I, I don't know if I would ever be strong enough to stand up there and, you know, read their testimonies against him and the way he affected their lives. I mean, that guy is just a freaking monster, a monster who can never be reformed and should be exterminated, like, goodbye, goodbye, Larry Nasser. So it just, it's unfortunate that it took that long for him to face justice. Um, just a very uh, sick person, right, Pamela? F buck full crazy, sir, that is a baby you're talking to? There's a little baby kid? I mean, it is, it's, it's just, it's really, when you have children in the entertainment industry who are making this amount of money and it, you know, and then the, the parental dynamics change. And when you have children that become the breadwinners of their family and who are, you know, have this big responsibility on them, that they shouldn't have as children and then are, you know, pushed into this adult environment where they don't have people looking out for their well being. They have people looking out for the almighty dollar. So there are, a, it takes, you know, there are a lot of adults 
who um, are around this situation and probably, unfortunately, a lot of adults who look the other way when these children are being victimized. Um, and that is, that to me is just as criminal. Um, to know something's going on or to have that fear that something's going on and to do nothing and say nothing and not protect uh, these people. So, and, and these kids, you know, even like, even in the Diddy situation with people coming forward and doing interviews now, it's like, well, why didn't you do anything then? Like, I understand that, you know, when you read Rodney Jones' lawsuit, there is a genuine fear he had. Diddy held a lot of power and he, you know, had been <laughs> involved in allegedly some shootings along the way and things. So, um, and there is like an almost untouchable status that some of these people have. That's why it took so long to take down Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein and now allegedly Diddy because they're just, they're insulated and protected so much because they, you know, make and generate so much revenue for very important people and corporations. And unfortunately, sometimes, um, you know, in this society, money reigns supreme over uh, humans and humanity. So yes, yes, yes. It's, uh, it's, it's very scary. For the record, your honor says it's even worse uh, when you think about how long, yes, this has been going on behind the scenes, even back in the Judy Garland days and over or in, and overusing their talents and youth. I saw a uh, interview and maybe it was Larry King that popped up on my, the late Larry King and the late Shirley Temple Black. I because Shirley Temple's deceased, correct? Well, Shirley Temple, obviously a huge child star back in the day. And she was talking about when she and her mother decided to go over from whatever studio they had a deal with previously, I believe to MGM, you know, because back in the days you would basically, um, like you guys know, you would sign a contract with a studio. You'd be contracted through that studio to do how many ever pictures. And then uh, Shirley Temple was thinking, and her mom were like, well, let's go check out MGM. Shirley Temple went in a room as a child with some adults to talk business and their mom went in a room and she said the guy that she met with, I don't remember what his name was, but it was, you know, one of the suits there, one of the pervs there. He got fully nude in front of her as a child. And she said her instinct as a kid, she didn't know what was happening, but she knew it wasn't right to have a grown man there naked. So she started laughing. Well, fortunately that laughing, I believe kind of, helped her out of the situation because he got very embarrassed and mad and was like, leave. And then her and her mom were driving home and she told her mom, you'll never guess what happened to me. And then her mom said, you'll never guess what happened to me. And I guess her mom was accosted as well. Her mom um, was also, there was some kind of like weird sexual thing they tried on her. So they're like, I guess we're not going to go with MGM. So it has been going on for I mean, for so long, there's so many sick asses in um, many businesses. But for some reason, it seems to be a lot of the uh, entertainment industry. And unfortunately, a lot of these people are gatekeepers. Uh, and when you're holding something, you know, so powerful, like Harvey Weinstein, for example, when he was like holding people's like dreams, hopes and dreams. And the only thing, you know, the one thing you've ever wanted, your love, your art form, and you're dangling your nasty ass pockmarked wiener in front of it. It's just unfortunate. I mean, you see this as a stand-up comedian. You see, you know, there's a lot of sexual harassment and, and sexual assault and things that happen within, you know, comedy, whether it be other comedians or any kind of gatekeepers at certain clubs or, you know, so it's, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's all too common. Yeah, Nicole. Yeah, they did the same to her mom. And that was so sad. Um, but I, I did like how Shirley, uh, as an adult told the story and you could tell like her defense mechanism was like to laugh about it because she's like, I didn't know what to do. And this guy was very, very, uh, you know, embarrassed. Now we know that's like a kink for some people. They want that kind of shame. I learned about the only kind of Dom I would ever be is a finance Dom. And I think I learned about the finance Dom from euphoria. It wasn't one of those girls a finance dom, or maybe I just learned about what it was. Maybe she, no, I think she was laughing when the guy had very small package and they were getting off on that. But I want to be the fine the finance dom. You know, you don't have to touch nobody. You just have to be like, spend your money here. Buy me ten pairs of Doc Martens. You know what I mean? 
platforms. Um, I could do that. Like I could definitely like shame yucky men for sure, but uh, <laughs> I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, she was like pointing and laughing. He was like, ah, uh, I know that's the thing, Jen. There are so many people that will never speak about it. And I understand, uh, it must be incredibly difficult to speak about in general, but then to have that kind of story after you speak out too, um, it, it follows you and it kind of becomes your legacy. And that's, that's unfair because you're victimized on a whole other level then by sharing that, because then it follows your name, but you didn't do anything wrong. So now instead of being an artist or an actress or, you know, whatever you are, a singer, a dancer, uh, you know, um, a librarian, you instead now are followed by this title that of um, being like a victim of this and this person's name is forever tied to yours. And that in itself, I feel like is just re-victimizing the victim in a lot of ways because you don't want any ties to someone who would do something to you. So the people that do step forward and share their story, obviously they're doing a service for, you know, future victims and hopefully so that no one has to go through what they go through. But I do understand why a lot of people stay quiet. Um, there's so many reasons, but one of them I think is just having that forever tied to you. And then if you're in the media, you're in the entertainment industry, you're always asked about that shit. And it's like, this doesn't define me and I don't want it to, you know, I mean, I would definitely, um, feel that way. And like HC saying victims tend to blame themselves. This is what predators fully understand. Yep. Unfortunately. Yeah. Like Monica Lewinsky. And we look at it now and we're like, damn, Monica Lewinsky was slut shamed for a grip for so long. Hey, you guys be nice to each other. Um, doggos come on, come on. Uh, she, for so long and really she was just a 22 year old woman, a 22 year old intern, like a baby compared to Bill Clinton's old ass. And there was definitely a discrepancy in power, you know, power dynamics and things. And yet, he got to go on and, you know, go through, you know, life and just be like, wow, ah, that's Bill. That's crazy Bill. I mean, my mom even has a, she has a very fun laundry room, as you can see, you know, she's kind of like me. We like our fun little stuff, but on her, um, in her laundry room, on her light switch, she has, it's Bill Clinton and the little switch is his wiener of his pants, like his pants are unzipped. And that was a gift she got, like, I think in the nineties and it's still on there. Um, it's a real relic, but you know, Monica suffered so much for that. And Bill Clinton, I mean, has Bill Clinton ever been held accountable? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. She was the butt of late night jokes. Slut I mean, Jay Leno made a career on that. And yet it's like, the, he was the president and he was old as fudge. Like what? And it was like, she's horrible. It's like, okay, but this guy <laughs> is the president of the United States of America, the leader of the free world. But huh? I mean, that was pretty gross. It was pretty gross. Uh, thank you, Eric. So nice to see you. Eric says, Oh, I can't even click on it. So nice to catch you live. It took me until my thirties to come out about my childhood essay. Well, Eric, I'm so, um, sorry that you had to go through that, but also, um, you're incredibly amazing and brave for being able to open up about that and, and come forward because that is, it's just something that no one should have to experience. Unfortunately, we hear these stories and it's just all too common. So, so good to see you, Eric Spear. Um, Sasswatch, thank you for the super chats. I remember, I uh, appreciate that. And I was reading this comment as I was saying, I appreciate it. And I said, remember, remember Corey Feldman came out in the years before Weinstein and hinted at how both he and Corey Haim, I think you meant Corey Haim too, suffered essay when they were young. Yes. And I love the Corys. I grew up with the Corys, the two Corys, Haim being my favorite. I mean, I had a whole, I thought I literally built a story in my head that I was reincarnated. And at one time, Corey Haim and I were married in a previous life, but we got in a car accident and we were driving on a small country road and our car crashed into a pond. So obviously I, I had just seen Beetlejuice. Like later in life, I was like, oh, that's just what happens in Beetlejuice, Jolene, to Gina Davis and uh, Alec Baldwin. But in my head, I like told my parents this. That's how cuckoo I was for Corey Haim. 
I just, I loved him. I thought he was just ugh, the best. Dream a little dream was like, I watched that movie over and over and over, obviously license to drive, um, you know, lost boys and stuff. But I was like, no, we were married in another life. And one day he will figure that out. And then as I got older, you know, hearing these stories about Corey Feldman and Corey Haim and just how they were victimized uh, and people passed them off as just druggies and liars. And it's like a lot of people don't, all, you know, there's a lot of addicts that turn to the addiction because of past childhood trauma, trauma they have, you know, whether it be genetics or trauma. I mean, there's lots of reasons for addiction, but um, you will find a lot of addicts who are uh, medicating themselves because of the trauma that they've been through. And I think the Corys were a prime example of that and just being exposed to Huh, I mean, exposed in more ways than one, but exposed within the industry to um, drugs, alcohol, uh, you know, things that these adults were giving them, whether to anesthetize or whatever the word is, whether to like come calm them down, to Cosby them, if you will. So, yeah. And allegedly, Charlie Sheen uh, might have been one of the... Uh, he might have essayed uh, Corey Haim. I mean, that was coming out and he got a new TV show. So... Yeah, and it doesn't help that Corey Feldman, you know, is out there like Tom Sandoval trying to sing and being weird. So that does not help the situation that he that but they keep putting him on the Today show with like his angels or whatever and he's looking really cuckoo for cocoa puffs. So then it's hard to, you know, people are like, mm, I don't know if I believe him." Which is unfortunate. Uh but yes, Goonies. Goonies. Um Corey Feldman, yeah, said Corey Haim got it worse than he did. Yeah. You could, I mean, as the years went on in Corey Haim's addiction and when you saw interviews with him and you could just see, like, looking back, like, just kind of like a, a vacancy in his eyes, almost like a dark, like, he was such a, again, I, I was a little obsessed, but I watched every interview with him. I had magazines with him and he was such, like, a fun, loving you know, seem to be for someone you don't know, but you watch. But then through the years, you'd see his interviews and you're like, there was some pain behind those eyes. There was some, it was crazy. So um, supposedly maybe on the set of Lucas, that's what they were saying that where Corey Haim was pretty young and Charlie Sheen was a lot older and he uh, apparently essayed um, Corey, might've sodomized him. So, um, I mean, all this is alleged, but that Charlie had done this to Corey Haim. That is all. Um, those were allegations. And I think Feldman even said that. So, and there, I mean, you don't even get started on the Orlando Brown story. I mean, now they're just, you know, passing him off as like a crazy crackhead or something. But like, how did he go from that so raven to this? You know, um, that's why you just, you never know someone's story. And there are a lot of people out there who are just being dismissed because they've fallen into a life of addiction um, due to, you know, uh, being victimized at a very young age. So, so yeah, you guys, Oh goodness. Um, and yeah, I mean, it could be that, you know, Charlie Sheen, maybe he's, he was, who knows, was the victim of, um, something too. Cause it kind of, you know, a lot of times the victims then become the, uh, assaulters, unfortunately. So, Yes. Uh, Susie Q says, bottom line, need to look out for the kids. It takes a village. Yeah, I really don't. Honestly, I don't think children belong in Hollywood. I think that there are other ways and other methods. I, I don't know. I don't need to see a story with a kid. I just don't. I really don't. I, I mean, I don't, I don't want anyone AI'd, but if we're going to do anything with the AI, maybe we can just agree we're going to just AI kid actors. That's it. No other actors can be AI'd. You can't AI any writing, but kids, you, we can create robot kids to do the acting parts. And I'm okay with that. I just don't think children belong anywhere near that. I think until you are a fully an adult with a fully formed brain, hopefully. I know that takes until you're like 23 or something for your brain to fully be formed, I think. Um, but I don't think we need kids. No offense, all offense, but I don't think that it's a business where children belong. I don't think children belong in business. That's, but that's just me, um, for sure. So, oh, you guys. Okay. Speaking of, uh, weird allegations, we'll move into, uh, did you guys see that Brandy Glanville? So we've been waiting for this like ultimate girls trip on Bravo to 
come out, like the next iteration that had Alex McCord from Roni, the OG Roni. Um, and we've been kind of waiting and just thinking that it's scrapped. Like it's never going to come out because there was these allegations from Caroline Manzo that Brandy Glanville, former Real Housewives of, of Beverly Hills, um, sexually violated her while filming. Now, despite cameras everywhere, there was Bravo didn't come to really either side, especially Brandy's. And Brandy has been very pissed about that. Okay. And um, so now, finally, today, an executive producer <clears throat> for Ultimate Girls Trip claims Brandy Glanville disrespected Caroline Manzo, but didn't sexually violate her. So they might have actual footage to prove this. So this is according to, it's okay, Ted, you go down and see dad. He just got home. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You can leave. It's okay. Yeah, go see him. He hears uh, Chell just pulled into the uh, <laughs> garage and he hears the garage door. So he's like, <laughs> um, so this producer is now an executive producer of the Real Housewives Ultimate Girl Trip claims in a new court document that Caroline Manzo felt disrespected by Brandy Glanville, but wasn't sexually violated by her. And it's all been very cryptic, but very damning for Brandy and Brandy's career. And Brandy's done herself no favors with previously just not really paying attention to people's boundaries and getting a little too wasty, uh, wasted, you know. So as page six previously reported, the Real Housewives of New Jersey alum sued Bravo, that's Caroline Manzo, sued Bravo and Peacock earlier this year, claiming the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills alum harassed her, that's Glanville, and kissed her without consent at the behest of production while they filmed in Morocco for Ultimate Girls Trip. Manzo, 62, also claimed in court documents that Glanville, 51, then proceeded to mount Manzo on the couch, holding Manzo down with her body, forcibly squeezed Manzo's cheeks together and thrust her tongue in Manzo's mouth while humping her. Good God, I've never read these specifics. Not humping. Okay. Um, in court documents filed in response, uh, Manzo's lawsuit, Lisa Shannon claims Manzo told production at the time that Glanville's alleged actions that evening had triggered memories of her past childhood trauma. Oh, that's heartbreaking, but didn't mention an assault. Our primary concern at the point or at that point was making sure that Manzo felt safe read the documents obtained by page six. She told us that she felt safe, that she wanted to continue to film, and that she did not want Glanville to be sent home. Shannon then claims Manzo was not left alone with Glanville. What's wrong, my teddy? Okay, you guys, I'm sorry. I got to go bring him downstairs for a second to Chelsea. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. It's okay, Teddy. You're fine. Um, and so I'll be right back. We'll take a quick nostalgic break. Smash that like while you're waiting and take a sip of your favorite beverage. We'll be right back. Welcome to Goth Talk. I'm Cersei Nightshade. And I'm Azrael of Gus, Prince of Sorrow. Tonight, we're coming to you live from Suncoast High School. We're just down this hall. The pathetic day dwellers of the class of 1998 are celebrating the tawdry amusement known as the prom. Hey! This is wrong. What? You. Doing my homework, it's wrong. Well, I was just trying to help. It's like I'm taking advantage of you or something. You're not taking advantage of me. The square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sums of the square of the other two sides, baby! It would be different if we were like... But now, we just... You know friend or whatever no time there's never any time i don't have time to study i'll never get into stanford i'll let everyone down i'm so confused i can't do this anymore 
It's okay. You're right. It's okay. Everything will be okay. Yeah. I just need one of these. Pills? You mean you really are taking drugs? No, in a way it was wrong, but I just have a feeling that this is going to be really good. I don't know. See, whoever's going to tutor you, their name is next to yours. Brain Krakow? Are you... Brain? Brian. I need them! Jesse, give me those! I need them back! I have to sing! Jesse! You can't sing tonight! Yes, I can! I'm so excited! I'm so excited! I'm so... <laughs> scared! <laughs> so... Anyway, uh, the Odyssey is like this real long book, right? And I don't uh, believe I... this. I don't. You, you like do this? This is like how you live? Yeah. I love that. Are you brain? Are you brain? I'm so glad you like them, Lindsay. Thank you. I love a little nostalgia. I heard on a TikTok from a therapist, if you guys aren't following me on TikTok, feel free to follow me at Jolene Lenzer. Um, she was saying there's a thing called uh, neural nostalgia where your brain, I guess the music you listen to when you are young, like a teenager is the music that affects you the most, the music that stays with you. That's why we tend to go back and listen to music of our youth because it creates, you know, it'll make us feel young again. Sometimes it makes us feel happy. So it actually can be very therapeutic for people to do. And that makes sense because I remember as a teenager being like, oh, my mom will knock it out of the 60s and 70s. Jesus. And now with me, it's like I will go back to like my favorite 90s music or my favorite 90s television shows because of this like neural nostalgia. And it'll just make me happy. You know, also today is the... How many years did my husband say the anniversary of Kurt Cobain's death, which I guess is not, you know, but I, I did wake up telling uh, A-L-E-X-A, I don't want to say it in trigger your, if you have one of those, um, but on April 5th, 1994, he um, passed away. So uh, today would be the anniversary of his passing. And I guess uh, his daughter, Frances Bean Cobain, wrote a moving tribute on the 30th anniversary of his death. Oh my gosh, we may have to read that. Oh, Frances Bean, she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. Okay, let's get back into this story and then we can, um, how did I know you'd mentioned Nirvana? You just know me, Tracy. You just know me at this point. Okay, so back to the Caroline Manzo and Brandy Glanville. Oh, goodness. Um, so Brandy mounted her, humped her, triggered uh, Caroline Manzo, bad situation. But in court documents uh, filed in response to Manzo's lawsuit, like I was saying, Lisa Shannon claims Manzo told production at the time that Glanville's alleged actions that evening had triggered memories of her past childhood trauma, but didn't mention an assault. Our primary concern at that point was making sure that Manzo felt safe, read the documents obtained by page six. She told us that she felt safe, that she wanted to continue to film and that she did not want Glanville to be sent home. Shannon then claims Manzo was not left alone with Glanville that evening. And the following morning, Manzo told Shannon the other production members and the other production members that she still felt safe and wanted to continue filming the reality series. Okay. In a conversation with Shannon, which has been reenacted in the documents, Manzo purportedly told her, listen, I feel safe. Okay. I feel your support. This is for me. I'm dealing with something that has been buried deep in my soul for 50 years. The documents also note uh, that following Glanville's incident with Manzo, production ceased, uh, including Glanville in group activities. However, other cast members, including Phaedra Parks, allegedly perceived the events differently. Okay. Um, all of us thought we were having fun, Parks purportedly told Manzo. No one knew about whatever has happened to you in the past. 
Shannon also claims Manzo flew home from Morocco because the rest of the cast informed Manzo in a group text that they were going to visit the only fan star at her hotel, being Brandy Glanville, which was the only time Manzo allegedly asked not to be filmed. At the time, she asked the production crew not to film her, and we honored that request, Shannon writes in the documents. Other than that incident, Manzo never asked not to be filmed or expressed to me or to my knowledge anyone else from production that she was uncomfortable being filmed. She continues, noting that Manzo willingly allowed production to film her, discussing her decision to depart the trip. Shannon's response also notes that the network paid Manzo in full despite leaving early. Manzo's attorney didn't immediately return page six request for comment. Glanville previously blasted Manzo's sexual harassment claims as absurd and false. We're filming, Brandy followed. What are Brandy followed what the producers asked of her, and there was no essay, Glanville's rep told page six in January after Manzo filed her lawsuit. She is innocent of these absurd accusations that have weighed on her mental and physical health for far too long without a word of support from Peacock, Shed, Shed must be maybe the production company, or Bravo. Oh, goodness. So then Brandy Glanville took to Twitter, which she does um, very often to air her grievances or, you know, talk about uh, different things. And on Twitter, she wrote um, after today's news that the executive producer claims Brandy Glanville disrespected Caroline Manzo but didn't sexually violate her. Brandy Glanville writes, am I happy? No. I feel. Do I feel vindicated? No. I'm effing more pissed than ever. What these producers do to make a TV show is disgraceful and disgusting. I begged for them to intervene. I almost died. It took a lawsuit. I'm not okay. She says it only took 15 months, a lawsuit, and me going through hell for the truth to start to come out. Oh, goodness. Wow. Um, that, you know, I think that's what we're learning in this whole reality. R reckoning whether you, you know, agree with, you know, I don't know if Bethany Frankel should be the vessel to bring this information forward because we have such strong feelings and she's just insufferable at times and also sometimes completely unlikable. Um, you know, but I, I will say that I think there, there's a lot of instances that we're seeing within production where, um, it's questionable. Some of, some of the, uh, behavior, some of the times they don't step in, some of the times they'll allow, the talent, quote unquote, to um, kind of get thrown under the bus and don't come to their aid. I mean, I just it it shows. I think the reality stars just how disposable they are and how much they might need a union. They might need to unionize or something. They might need to get some backing to help them out so they get, you know, paid uh, for all the times that you know, these shows re-air and things and um, all the different streaming services and how much their image is actually going to be out there. So, I mean, part of it uh, is I 100% agree with that they should, um, they should unionize. They should definitely have representation because some of this stuff is shady and like Epic Turtle saying sounds like an unsafe work environment. Yeah. For both Caroline and for Brandy, it just seems like Bravo just kind of sat on their hands with this and you're there, you see things and no one was really saying anything, which if after 15 months, people have made up their minds by then. You have already been tried and convicted in the court of public opinion, especially if you don't hear anything from Bravo, you're assuming, okay, Brandy is awful and, um, you know, this must be true. So, mm. uh, Sasswatch, thank you so much for the super chat. It says, Hey, Jolene, we were big fans of the OG Roni. What do you think of Heather Thompson's supposed relationship with Diddy? <sighs> Holla. Oh, my goodness. I forgot that she was Miss Holla, wasn't she? Holla. I wonder if she was at a freak off. And here's the thing 
has Heather come out and said anything? Cause I feel like Heather's the type that now that it's out there, Heather will, will spill if she has any info, but I haven't heard anything that she said, but that is interesting. Cause I haven't really thought about holla girl, Heather, holla. Uh, that was so cringy. Heather. <laughs> Poor Heather Thompson. That was just so cringe. Oh my gosh. But yeah, that I would love to hear. Yes, Pamela says that was her claim to fame. It was. I would love to hear um, her thoughts now since this came out. I don't follow anything um, regarding Heather Thompson, but that might be something I need to just do a quick Google because I would like to hear if she would have anything to say. Mm. Yeah, on Reddit four months ago, um, someone put, it's ironic listening to the house housewives praise Diddy in older seasons. Oh, I just, oh my God. I'm finding pictures of them. Oh, Sasswatch, you sent me down a rabbit hole with these two. Holla. I just had a really bad thought of like her being a jizzling, which obviously that is all cuckoo bananas because there's no proof that she had anything to do with any of this, you know, but ugh. okay, look here, I'll pull up one of the pictures that I, I found, I found two pictures of her and Diddy and it's so nineties that I could cry. Okay. Let me, there's that one. And there's this one. It's the holla. Heather and Diddy. Oh my goodness. So I would like to hear from her. I would like to hear from Heather. What do you know, Heather? What do you think? What are your opinions? Huh? Tell us. Did you sign an NDA? Here's the two of them together. Oh God. Now I'm so interested to find out. But I don't see that she has said anything. Let me check her. Instagram or oh, Instagram is so sweet and so boring. And she's listed as an entrepreneur and she's holding berries outside, like hiking, like, Oh, that's so fun for you, but not for me. Uh, and she last posted five hours ago and she's like in the snow, maybe with her son is her son that old. Oh my God. I'm so old. She says, I swear there were flowers right here. Hey, winter, it's spring's turn. So she's not posting anything or saying anything about this. So who knows if she was witness to any of these alleged things that occurred, but interesting. Let's see if she's got any, anything on Twitter. Let's do a little investigation here. Heather Thompson. <laughs> This is why she's saying holla. Oh, her and that holler. Oh, holla. I can now hear her saying it, and I'm cringing as she's saying it. Okay, here she is. Entrepreneur, biz, and creative consultant, speaker, TV personality, spokesperson, health coach, mama, adventure lover. Oh, she always like, mama. Hey, mama. 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 Well, I mean, she was on Dishing Drama with Dana Wilkie, but that was in... 2023. So March 30th, she was posting about something not having to do with that. Uh, oh, she's one of those people who posts her Instagram posts to Twitter. She needs social media help. Not that I'm the person. And then before then it's 2022. So I don't see her saying anything, but I welcome her to share. I wonder, will she be subpoenaed and she'll be like, holla. Hello. Oh yeah. Jacqueline. She loved herself. She hugged herself. Like she loved it, but I'll see if I can dig up anything else. Uh, maybe they did clothes together. Didn't she do, um, yummy. Oh, she had yummy. It was like yummy tummy. Oh, they're just so yummy. It was like the skims. She had like almost like a skims before skims and it was yummy. Oh, you know, you want something. Cause you can just hear her saying, Oh, I want something on your body. That's just so yummy. No, no, I want to eat yummy things and I want comfortable things on my body. Okay. And also things that might make me look snatched, even though there is no snatch there, but create the snatch. Um, Heather Tammy is a former Real Housewife of New York. And when she was on Roni, the Real Housewives of New York, 
her claim to fame was always that, you know, she worked with Diddy. She worked for Diddy for a period of time. Holla, holla. So, yeah, she did active wear, like Spanx type stuff. That was what she did. So, interesting, interesting. Okay, before we get into the Vanderpump, we will um, check out this Francis Bean tribute that they talk about. Because, again, today is the 30-year anniversary of the passing of the legendary Kurt Cobain. Um, and I was just listening to a little Nirvana earlier today. I was like, let's play some Nirvana. Let's play some Radiohead. Let's play some Silver Chair. I was having quite the morning. So, um, and then I've been having, I don't know if you guys ever have, but I've been having mornings where I need to listen to Olivia Rodrigo. There is something about that woman uh, that, I mean, she's so young. She's like 21 years old, but I just love Olivia Rodrigo. I think she's amazing. And I don't think I'm too old to love her. I had to question, am I too old to love this music? No. There's something that just is her lyric. She's just like, it's like pop, but her lyrics are very, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of emo touch with a little bit of punk. And she's just, she's very talented. And I, I love it. There's a very angsty feeling in her music. And it reminds me of my of my youth. And I just think she's so talented and I just love her. Okay. So Francis Bean Cobain writes moving tribute on 30th anniversary of Kurt Cobain's death. I wish I could have known my dad. That is like, Oh God, that's going to bring tears to my eyes. So the frontman of Nirvana died at the age of 27, April 5th, 1994, which makes him part of the 27 club, which was something I just remember always hearing about the 27 club. You know, you have Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, Janis Joplin, uh, uh, the Doors lead singer. Why can't I think of his name? Break on through to the other side. So many talented artists. Bradley Knoll from Sublime, I believe, was 27. Um, Shannon Hoon from Blind Melon. So many artists passing away at 27. Was Otis Redding 27? Okay. Well, there was a 27 club. And someone recently just passed away, um, the actor who was on The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Unfortunately, he passed away in uh, 27. Yes, sorry, Amy Winehouse. Jim Morrison is his name. Mm -hmm. So just so, it's just, it, uh, eerily ironic, coincidental that they all pass away at the age of 27 and a lot of them to um, drug overdoses and things, um, suicide, drug overdoses, things like that, unfortunately. So Frances Bean Cobain, um, is opening up about her grief on the 30th anniversary of her father, Kurt Cobain's death. On Friday, April 5th, that's today, marks 30 years since the Nirvana frontman died in uh, by taking his own life at the age of 27. His only daughter, whom he welcomed in August 1992 with wife Courtney Love, shared a moving tribute on Instagram on Friday. Frances Bean, 31. Oh my God, she's 31. I remember being a 14-year-old when Kurt Cobain passed away and she was like seeing her as a little baby. Um, posted a carousel of images, including throwbacks of Kurt from his childhood, photos of the father-daughter duo from the last time they were together, and a black and white shot of his hands. Text revealed that the latter was taken by R.E.M.'s Michael Stipe, who was a close friend of the grunge star and Francis Bean's. I didn't know Michael Stipe was Francis Bean's godfather. It's a pretty rad godfather. In her thoughtful caption, the artist wrote beautifully of how she's often been told that her hands resemble her father's. She also reflected upon feeling as though she wished that she could have known her father more closely as she was just 18 months old when he passed away. <gasps> My God. It's just everything is put into so much, so much of a bigger perspective once you get older. You know, because when this stuff happens, when you're a teenager, you just, it, you don't process it the same way. Now you look at, you're like, oh my God, she was an eight, 18 month old baby. Okay. So here's a picture of Kurt Cobain's hands uh, that was taken by Michael Stipe. And in her post, she says, 30 years ago, my dad's life ended. In the second and third photo capture, the last time we were together while he was still alive, his mom, Wendy, would often press my hands to her cheeks and say, with a lulling sadness, you have his hands. She would breathe them in as if it were her only chance to hold him just a little bit closer. Frozen in time, 
I hope she's holding his hands wherever they are. In the past 30 years, my ideas around loss have been in a continuous state of metamorphosing. The biggest lesson learned through grieving for almost as long as I've been conscious is that it serves a purpose. The duality of life and death, pain and joy, yin and yang need to exist alongside each other or none of this would have any meaning. Wow. It is the impermanent nature of human existence which throws us into the depths of our most authentic lives. As it turns out, there is no greater motivation for leaning into loving awareness than knowing everything ends. This is beautiful, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Oh my God, Sylvia Plath. I wish I could have known my dad. I wish I knew the cadence of his voice, how he liked his coffee, or the way it felt to be tucked in after a bedtime story. I always wondered if he would have caught tadpoles with me during the muggy Washington summers, or if he smelled of camel lights and strawberry Nesquik, his favorites, I've been told. But there is also deep wisdom being on an expedited path to understanding how precious life is. He gifted me a lesson in death that can only come through the lived experience of losing someone. It's the gift of knowing for certain when we love ourselves and those around us with compassion, with openness, with grace, the more meaningful our time here inherently becomes. Kurt wrote me a letter before I was born. The last line of it reads, wherever you go or wherever I go, I will always be with you. He kept his promise because he is present in so many ways, whether it's by hearing a song or through the hands we share. In those moments, I get to spend a little time with my dad and he feels transcendent. To anyone who has wondered what it would have looked like to live alongside the people they have lost, I'm holding you in my thoughts today. The meaning of, in our, of our grief is the same. That is just gorgeous, Francis Bean, you beautiful being. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to see if I can scroll through these. So here's the last picture they ever took together. She has guest jean overalls. She is a delight, okay? And here they are. And here is Kurt Cobain as a wee little baby and Kurt and his mother, Kurt again, just a little character. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. It does make you want to cry. And I think that there's so much truth in that, in that knowing that all of this is going to end is really what can make you appreciate it while you're here, knowing that it's not permanent, just like she said. I mean, that's really beautiful and profound. And that, and also like when she mentions that she has been, you know, mourning him or having to deal with this loss since before she was conscious of it, you know, that's, oh my goodness. Oh no, pics for you guys. Sorry. I wasn't sharing the screen. I was so moved by the, <laughs> I'm just like, it's just for me. It's just, just for me. Let me pull it back up. I, I apologize, you guys. <laughs> I'm just like, isn't this great, you guys? And you're like, uh, you're not showing us anything. Hello, Jolene. Figure it out. Let me show you these pictures because they're really cute. Oh, my goodness. Francis Bean Cobain. All right, here we go. 1.5 million followers. Here we go. And let me present this. And there we go. I'm like, isn't this amazing, you guys? And you're like, mm, no, mm, I'll bet you're not showing it to us. So here's Kurt Cobain's hands, a picture by Michael Stipe. All right. Um, <laughs> thanks, Tracy. <laughs> and then uh, here's Frances and Kurt, and she has the little guest jeans because the little triangle on her butt overalls. And these are the last pictures, I think, of the last, you know, their last pictures together. And there's him. As a little guy dressed up as, I believe, Frank Sinatra with the with the hat. And then her grandma, Kurt's mom, Wendy, who played a big part in uh, her childhood when um, 
you know, Courtney couldn't mother. Wendy stepped in and then uh, Kurt again. And then Kurt being a silly little guy. So cute. So sweet. I need to follow Francis Bean. Why don't I follow Francis Bean? That is, that's a crime, Jolene, that I don't. Ugh. Uh, thanks, Oz Fly Girl. You guys are so sweet. You're so sweet. Uh, uh. Uh, Lindsay says we're getting our special eclipse glasses. We better get superpowers like heroes this time too. Are y'all excited for the eclipse? Did you see the one in 2017? I don't think I saw the one in 2017. I don't remember, but I'm excited. Yep. I'm excited. What's wrong, Teddy? It's okay, baby. I'm just finishing up. Okay. So now we got to get into the Thunder Pump Rules After Show. Um and oh, goodness uh we have some things to talk about and that'll be the uh the last segment of the evening because there's so much rumors and nastiness where's meredith marks when i need her the rumors the nastiness the rumors <laughs> the nastiness <laughs> you want me to go there with her husband i can go there the <laughs> you can leave you can leave the rumors is my favorite the nastiness the rumors you guys want some treats where did they go where are these doggos i see come here babes you want some treats we're just gonna give doggies a little treats i think originally he heard chell leaving to go pick up some dinner for us and then come here baby come here baby boy come here here you go here bucky here you go Teddy, come here. Oh, can you sit? Can you sit? Oh, you're such a good boy. There's some treatsies. It's like getting to the end of the bag of treats where uh, <laughs> they're already like broken up. So they think they're getting just a jackpot of treats at this point. So hopefully um, he'll be able to to last because there's this is about the time you know an hour and a half to two hours where teddy's like all right you've been live enough now let's pay attention to me okay even though we did go to the dog park today we took a walk this morning and we went to the dog park today and he became friends with two boxers and oh duchess and i forgot her brother's name and they were running and just oh they had so much fun playing and so I thought he would be very, very, very tired. Very, very, very. Okay. Let me see. Where did, did I close the dang thing? Okay. I found it. Okay. So yeah, I thought he would be more tired than he is, but um, that's okay. That's okay, Teddy. We might need a third walk today. We might need that. All right. So, oh goodness, Vanderpump Rules After Show. Um, we're going to watch part of it here. As we know, Vanderpump Rules this season, if you follow my channel. I mean, uh, disappointing. Um, now, the After Show is just uh, giving us more insight into <laughs> the good, the bad, and the super, super ugly. Emily says, boxers are cool. I don't think I've seen one in person. Oh, they were really cute. They were like um, brown colored in their little faces, and then they start foaming, and then it gets on their face when they get excited. So, yeah. Oh, oh dad's home. Oh, there they go. The garage door's opening. Buffy, are you going too? No, you staying with mom? All right, cool. Girls night. Girls night. Uh, thank you, Neil. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen, for the super chat. Jen says, Tom burying himself, proving how bad of a dog parent he is, and Schwartz telling him to stop was hilarious. Also being side-eyed by Jax has to be humiliated. It has to be, right? But we all know that Tom is impenetrable, is impenetrable, impenetrable. He cannot feel humiliation or shame for some reason. He lacks that. Is that part of the narcissist handbook but i mean you would think you would think okay so let's let's listen you guys and have some fun because ugh, this is just this is this is cuckoo okay so um yes rage inducing nicole that is the word that we would use for this season so vpr after show they talk about uh they talk with the valley cast and this just made me a hundred percent love jason and janet from the valley and i know i owe you guys a valley episode three recap and that's coming okay so let me know if you can't hear this in the chat and we will take a listen 
Let's talk about Anne. At a really delicate, fragile time in my life, like she asked Ariana to work for her. As she was working for you? Yes, literally on a normal like Monday work day, wearing like a suit, which she never does. She became professional and prepared. Oh, wow. <laughs> Were their cameras up? Yeah. Okay, that's why. Yeah. Putting out a performance, yeah. I needed an assistant because... Okay, Tom Schwartz, making quite the assumptions about Anne. Maybe she's just sick of working for your baby man friend, Tom Sandoval. Also, did you guys know Decider uh, let us know today that Anne was featured in an episode of The Office? So, I mean, everyone in L.A. has entertainment goals. Everyone's basically an actor, director, writer, comedian, something in the business. And sometimes you have to take other jobs, you know, like assistants. And it's not... The worst thing in the world to get your face on a big network and a big show like Vanderpump Rules. So I'm sorry, Schwartz, but you basically did the same thing. So stop. You know, I was, things were falling through the cracks and I only know one assistant, Anne. So I thought I should ask her for recommendations. And plus she's great at what she does. But then I feel like she was at a point where she just felt like she was so unhappy in her job. I would love to work for like an amazing girl boss. If it doesn't work out, totally understand. Like, <laughs> no worries. It's a lot of pressure because I felt really bad because I didn't want her to think that like I was going to poach her, but I also didn't want her to think that uh, I wasn't hiring her because like I didn't think she would do a good job. Like I didn't want her to feel bad like in any way. And then she ended up getting fired anyway. So a lot of worrying for nothing. I could probably should have just poached her, honestly. I think it's that poacher. <laughs> <laughs> he was showing you zero respect. Yes, so you no. Know. And then part of me felt like, well, then I would just be just like him. Can I ask one question? Did you make her sign an NDA? Yeah. Oh, thank God. That's the smartest movie you've she ever made. She started a podcast. What? It's called I Of course, Jax. Oh, can I see a question? Jax, uh, as someone who has to go to the ENT quite a bit with nose issues, something in the deviated septum still happening with him. Okay, I had deviated septum surgery. I had nose job surgery. I've had lots of procedures, but something's still happening here because they're still doing this. And she's like, Did you make her sign an NDA? Oh, thank God. Thank God you made her sign an NDA. Something's still happening. You gotta look at that. Okay. And of course, Jax is worried about the NDA. And then Tom's like, She started a podcast. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Well, I signed an NDA. <laughs> I love that Anne's podcast is called. I signed an NDA and he's like, how mad he is. Look how mad he is. Anyone that makes him this mad, I love them. And I'm going to have to listen to this podcast. I've listened to like clips that have been put out, but I haven't listened to a full episode. But now I'm going to because you made him this mad. Look at how mad he is. Oh, he's so mad. He's still wearing a lightning bolt. Oh, my God. Like Ariana said, get a new bit. It's old. He has lightning bolt earrings, lightning bolt necklace. Ugh. What can, so if she signed an NDA, what could she possibly talk about? Uh, I don't know, but she'd love to get a letter from my lawyer. Oh. Tom, you are not going to sue Anne. Your letter from your lawyer. Who is your lawyer? Is it the 23-year-old PR person that you had when you did that horrendous interview with the New York Times Magazine when you compared your situation to George Floyd? Remember he had that 23-year-old run around? She's like, this is my first time doing this. I think my mom or dad works for the company. Anyways, I'm like representing this old man. And she had, ugh, if you haven't read that New York Times Magazine article, read it just for the fact that the writer completely roasts Tom. And I mean, rightfully so. He's roasting himself. But just her basically writing what happened while she was there interviewing him is, I mean, the jokes write themselves and the fact that his like PR person is like this 23 year old um, wonderful young woman like on TikTok who was like, oh, my God, she didn't even know much about Tom. It was it was hilarious. We read the article on an episode of No Offense, All Offense. But the fact that Tom's like, mm, I'm going to should be hearing from my lawyer. Sure, Tom. OK, sure, sure, sure. Is it sweet, James? Did you hire by the hour? Sweet, James. No one's worried about you, Tom. Okay. Oh my God. It's annoying because she's like low key saying things that are like not true. Like, I, I doubt it. I believe Anne. You're the known liar. I believe Anne. And how many times can this grown man who's 57 year old use the word like everything, every like she's like, and I'm like, and I'm like, what is what? <sighs> Stop saying like so much. <laughs> He's very stunted. I saw in some interviews, she's like, oh, yeah, like I would go there and like Ariana would already be up and doing stuff because she's always busy. And like Tom's like, you know. we have to count the likes. Can someone. OK, 
I'm not going to be good at this with paying attention, but if someone can count the likes or just give a estimate of how many you hear in this statement he makes about Anne. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I don't know, but she's about to get a letter from my lawyer. Okay. Oh my God. It's annoying because she's like low key saying things that are like not true. Like I saw in some interviews, she's like, oh yeah, like I would go there and like Ariana would already be up and doing stuff because she's always busy and like Tom's like, you know, doing this and I have to like do that. I'm just like, girl, you know that Ariana wouldn't leave her bedroom till at least one in the afternoon. Like I was always up, always like made her coffee, like did this. I went to bed after her. I woke up before her every day. It's annoying to me because Ariana never wanted her around. She would be annoyed that Anne was over. Not so much at Anne, but the fact that somebody was over. You know, and she's like, why do you need an assistant? Why? And I'm like, because she like does things for me. She waters all Ariana's plants, like, you know, keeps everything stocked in the house. It hurt. It made it seem like she just was very publicly, you know, going to Katie and Ariana, of all people. That's a huge, like, I feel like a conflict of interest. It seems like a betrayal. <laughs> there have been... That was more than I even thought there would be, you guys. Oh, my God. Lucy counted, and Lucy said, Tom said, like, as many times as he is old. So the same age. He said 63 likes, which is a quinky dink that he is also 63 year old, years old. This man uses like as a comma, and there are comma splices throughout. He is ridiculous. And like, and I'm so like, and Katie and Ariana of all people. Like, oh my God. Thank you, Jen, for the super chat. Jen says he wants to sue her for saying Ariana wakes up early. <laughs> Stop. I'm going to like legit cry. <laughs> and she knows that like, I wake up early. Like, you guys, like, you know, dude. <laughs> Shut up. That's true, Jen. He does want to sue her because she knows that, like, I wake up, like, way earlier than Ariana, Ariana who's, like, a total bitch. She's, like, a lazy-ass bitch. <laughs> Thank you, Linda Devlin, for the very generous super sticker. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, Leslie. He felt bitch. <laughs> I am <laughs> crying. <laughs> I know it's not supposed to be this funny, but it's so funny. <laughs> Okay, breathe. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, this is. <laughs> it's. It, it, it writes itself. I. Uh, and like, uh, I wake up super early. Oh, like, seriously. Like, 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 like. Yes, 18 likes. Partly cloudy. And that was a couple sentences. <laughs> There have been some questions this year about Anne's job responsibilities. She's oh, yeah. an assistant. She's not a housekeeper. She's not a maid. Oh my God, there's so much sticky shit on the yeah, floor. Mop it. That's so not what you should be doing. <laughs> like I have friends who have like a like a house manager, right? It's like they come in and- I will say Ariana in this, she's saying like a lot too. I don't always catch her likes as much, but I can tell that she and Tom have hung out for many years together. Because she has this tendency, not as bad as him, but she has the tendency to. And if you hang out, it's kind of like if you hang out with someone who stutters, you might pick up a stutter. That's just how it is. And if you hang out with someone who uses words like like a lot, you might pick it up. That. So hopefully her not hanging out with him, she'll get rid of that. <laughs> and they do things like organize like packages, open packages, get you know, whatever. And like, okay, there's, they come in and there's like some dishes in the sink and they put them in the dishwasher, like stuff like that. Like to me is like, not out of the realm of something that Anne would do that wouldn't be weird. But like this big, huge project of like having to clean up the kitchen island and people's hair off the floor. Dude, it's her hair. <laughs> like he's like, ew. <laughs> yeah, clumps of hair. Clumps. On the floor oh, here. No. Oh, that's a lot of hair. Not even an extension, like a clip-in. We're talking like a tuft. That looked like it had been like ripped out of someone's head or something. Just stuck to the kitchen floor. Ew. Because it's so sticky. But the thing is, is that like, these things are not abnormal for sticky with jizz allegedly just seems like so no appropriate to me and then i feel like i'm being like gaslit into thinking it should be no it's not she talked again katie proving that this is the kind of girlfriend you need no it's not you're justified it's not normal and he's up like whatever from the night before dishes cups whatever glassware whatever uh tidies up and then it's like checking emails going through like scheduling stuff like that she does like gets on the phone with customer service that's another thing that she like that's in her job description because i hate getting on the phone with like 
customer care or tech support. I hate doing adult stuff. Like it's so like bad. Like I can't like do it. Like she picks up my underoos that are dirty. She picks up like my guitar, my like my penis flute, like like the dog poo, like stuff I shouldn't have to do. Anne had the shittiest job, literally and figuratively. Support, like that is a nightmare to me. But she doesn't touch dirty laundry though. Sometimes I have to, mm. to pick up his dirty socks and underwear. Schwartz, have you ever thought about getting an Liar. assistant? No, pretty self-sufficient. I mean, my, my dream scenario is just to have someone who, a home chef and someone who does my laundry. Can you, these gentlemen are 70. You have to learn to do your own laundry and you have to do it. We've seen Tom Schwartz's apartment. It's a disaster. Tom Sandoval, disastrous. Ugh. I like doing everything else Yuck. in my life. Maybe customer service. My dream though, I hate laundry with every fiber of my existence. I hate it more than anything in the planet aside from mayonnaise. I hate doing laundry, but yeah, anyways. But it is nice to have this. Mayonnaise? Assistant, yeah. You look like mayonnaise. I can't believe he hates mayonnaise. Nice. Yeah. You create filth. You think that's totally cool that you have Anne, who is not a maid, cleaning this stuff up for you. You just sleep in the next day. You don't do any of it yourself. Yo. Like, fine, that's that's a lifestyle that you think is acceptable. It's not how I want to live. Sheena wanted to uninvite Sandoval to the beach, and you convinced her not to, yeah. to, to let him still be invited. Why? I think for James and I, we kind of was like, whatever, we're over the stuff, we're gonna move on with our lives, but I think it's just trying to get the rest of the group to catch up which is difficult when they don't talk, when they don't communicate. And the only time they communicate yeah. is when we when we bring everyone together to talk. Everyone is invited. And if she can't handle that, then she shouldn't be going to places. And if she doesn't want to step up to the plate and figure that out, that's on her. I, ugh, 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 ugh. I hate listening to Brock say this. It's so, and if she can't step up to the plate and she doesn't want to handle this, then it's on her. It's on her. Okay, Brock, we would love to see you in the same situation and see how you react. So you are just forcing this man upon her that has caused her a lot of trauma and that she's like, I'm not ready. I am not ready for this. And Brock says, should be ready. Doesn't matter. Isn't that she wants to do an orgy? Ain't it? It's just, it's a problem. Brock, be quiet. Be quiet. You should have no opinion about this. I don't know what you're trying to do here, but I don't like it. As much as I can respect that stance, sometimes things in this group, especially with Tom and Ariana and the way Tom's actions have been, I don't know that there is a road to mending that. There's a good chance Ariana will never be okay with this man. I wouldn't. And she doesn't have to. Uh, fence, you know? Generally speaking, I am a person who likes to bridge gaps between people. But with Ariana and Tom, I'm like, you know what? What he did to me is just at a level where if Ariana doesn't want to be around him and she doesn't want her friends around him, like, totally get it. And if you want to hang out with him, then you have to face the repercussions of her not wanting to hang out with you. I mean, just being around them before everything broke, the way that the three of them would hang out and just be like, I love you, I love you, and like, always all up on each other, for them to have been hooking up on the side the entire like for like seven months eight months nine months is like sick to me it's hard for me to ever get over that personally because if he treats someone like that who is you know a person he's in a relationship with for 10 years has respect for is you know in love with then like why would i want to continue a relationship where i'm gonna get closer to someone who's like that like what's he gonna do i mean he doesn't care about relationships in that way he does not seem remorseful yes, genuinely remorseful and i think if he found remorse and expressed that he would be in a much better position with the rest of the group, but it feels like he's yes, really Janet. upset by the reaction instead of really being upset by his own actions. What do you think needs to happen between Tom and Ariana for them to like find some resolution and move on? Time. Mm. Time is the only thing. Brock's like, mm, time. Jason's answer, not only is he the hottest guy in all of Vanderpump and one of the hottest guys we've seen on Bravo, but also, like, ugh, his answer was everything. I, I, where has this man been? I hope he doesn't disappoint me on this season of the Valley. But right now, I am loving uh, Jason and also Janet. And uh, the way they just logically were like, yeah, th that, was, that was pretty messed up what he did. So why would, I, why would you want to be friends with that? Why would she want him around? Everything he said was just what we expected her friends to say. You know, and I think... You know, Jan's been a part of the group for a long time and Jason, you know, they're friends. But just the way he dismantled Sandoval with just facts, <laughs> I, it shouldn't be that refreshing. But it's so refreshing to hear a man on these shows do that. Oh, my God. I can, can do that because and time apart, time away from the same roof. 
you know? There's something spiritual, right? When you sleep under the... It's like you're sleeping under the same yeah. roof. I mean, it's like dreams. It's like you guys are living the same in life. I mean, it's like you're keeping it separate. And I know she's away now, but like, they just like, it's been too long. It's been like a year. It's going to be two years. Is it going to go three years? Like, what are we going to be talking about this season 15 of Vanderpump? Like, that's crazy. I'm over here on that. Living in the house situation, somebody needs to figure that out. Uh, but in the mind of for the sake of the... They have figured it out, Chantilly Lace Brock. They figured it out. She bought another house. Okay. You're again, we are only hearing from basic ass bitches who don't even own anything. Brock is not on Sheena's house. Sheena owns it. And Lala was not on Randall's house. Randall owns it. So how would you know anything about how to divvy up the house or what to do when you are in a business transactional, you know, relationship like that? Uh, and, and dealing with property when none of you guys own it. You don't own shit. You don't have anything. Mim's coming in with the, I feel like James will become Danny's next drug mule. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Uh, Mim's a let's hope not. Okay. Chantilly Lace and a dumb, dumb face this season, Brock. And for the sake of the group, fuck the group. Okay. Let her feel her feelings. Give her time. You know, you need to help your wife. She has 56 people's locations on her phone and she's dealing with serious OCD and you're poo-pooing it. So go help your wife. Of this group, everyone needs to start communicating. And I was annoyed that Tom didn't try and- Give your wife her clothes back. Stop this. Do this before Tahoe. Then we go to Tahoe, we do that. And now coming out of Tahoe, uh, you know, no one wants to have these conversations. So it's like, I'll, I'll encourage as much as I can and I'll push for that. But if no one wants to have it, I don't, again, I did my part, I'm out. I, I can only lead a horse to water. I can't force it to drink. Like the San Andreas Earth. And I know about horses because during my orgy, I forgot to mention, ne ne I'm going to mention it, okay, James? Just give me a minute. There was a horse. There was a koala. There was a boomerang. There were four stars Australian for beer. And there was a horse. And the horse was watching. And let's just say what they say about horses is true. Okay? But this just, it's, I didn't, I didn't remember, but there were two vaginas. So it's not horse gay. Okay? Uh, whatever Brock is saying, I'm just like, uh, I cannot get over his Sanderson sister shoes and his whole vibe. I don't like it. Okay. So earthquake finally happens and the house physically splits <laughs> into half. And they're like, no, no, right? And then that's when they finally have the combo because it's like, <laughs> I mean, I think then they can finally talk. <laughs> Shorts, you'd like to be a dad one day. <laughs> if I get to 50 and I don't have a kid yet, I'm going to start panicking. I will be in panic mode, existential crisis mode. Today I opened up Instagram and like the first six posts were all people holding their stomachs like this, having kids. And I felt like my, I, it triggered my biological clock. So that means like when I'm 70, my daughter or son will be 20. And at 70, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be super mobile. I don't even know if I want to live much past 70. <laughs> what? Wait till you get, wait till you're we'll like see. 68. Like we talked about, we're going to reevaluate yeah, when I, we get I, there. Right now, I, if I have a hard out at 70, 75, I'm okay with that. We'll see. If I have a family, I'm going to want to live. So these dudes want to die next year? These 74-year-olds are like, that's it. Now, I'm pretty sure Schwartz is 69. And Jax is damn near 80. So they're going to Kevorky in themselves. <sighs> they get too much time. Uh, Mims, thank you for the super chat. Says Brock is looking like Sheena's first husband, not Shay. I was just watching old clips of Sheena and Shay. And oh, do you know Shay had like, he had kind of like a banger song he put out that was uh, based on Sheena. And I forgot how it went. I'm going to look it up though. But there was a song that he put out a little while, a couple years after they had divorced. And I was like, oh, this, this is... This is a jam, Shay. This is a jam, but kinda, kinda, kinda. I'll live for sure. What in your mind constitutes an old dad? Like Robert De Niro. <laughs> Isn't he like 80? Brittany. Uh, what? Mm, let's say Brittany with the bear cheeks. She's like Robert De Niro, maybe. Rotten hell, Robert De Niro. <laughs> Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, I think he became an old dad. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of old. Lala's like, um, all the men that I try to date in Hollywood, allegedly. But Very hey, old. men's Randall stuff doesn't stop working like women. So you can be any age. Mean stuff doesn't stop working. Like sex education with Brittany from Kentucky. Men's stuff does start stop working like women. We just shrivel up and die and we can't procreate. But men, they can have babies until they're like a hundred. So just lay them. Beard. Meemaw had a baby at 96 years old, but 
We don't know what she did with it. She can't remember where she left it. For real. Honestly, I think it just depends on like where you're at physically. Yeah. Right? Like age really is just a number. If you can. It's actually not. Um, okay. 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 R. Kelly, it's not. Keep up. Mm -hmm. Then like. By all means. It gets a lot harder as you get older, so, you know. Oh, here we go, old man Jax. Everything changes when you're a dad. He's like, nothing's the same. You can't just, like, cheat on your wife, you know. You can't just, like, talk shit about her and go out and hire chicks for your valley backroom bar who aren't wearing a bra. It's so You have to have sex with, like, the same person over and over again. It's so hard. So hard. You know, because these kids are active. They're energy, man. Yeah, yeah we saw your kid, like, got stuck under the couch. You can't throw, play ball with them or throw them up on your shoulders at, at the, you know, a concert or whatever. A concert? Oh, my God. He is going to be the Janelle Evans of parents. He's going to be like, we're going to go to Kesha. We're going to go to Kesha, kids. Kids to concerts. Not like <laughs> Coachella, <laughs> but I'm <laughs> saying. Like, no, like Burning Man. Yeah. yeah. You can't do acid with your kid, dude. I'm just, talking about so full, what, what happened? I got friends back home that are my age Man, that have kids going to college. Shut right up. Now. Like, that's how old I am. How old were you when Cruz was born? Was three. Yes, you're in your 40s. Me too. I have a friend whose daughter has graduated from college, and she has a better job than I've ever had. So, but Jax, that's what happens when you're a part of the greatest generation, okay? Jax was in World War II, allegedly. Uh, Mim says Tom will impregnate Tom if they don't have... Kids by 50. No. They're both sterile. Mm -mm. Can't happen. Three, I was 41. It, it's, it's, it's just it's a number. It's all, it's all how your body's feeling. Schwartz is like Peter Pan. I think he will be just fine. I think he has plenty of time. Yeah, I think Schwartz will be a good dad, too. Honestly. Brittany, we, we can't listen to you. You made Jackson dad. I think George, I think George will be a great dad. Why? I don't know. Because he's responsible? No, no. Because he likes to drive. If his mom can come to town and watch the kids, then he can party. Honestly. I do too. And he's like very outdoorsy. I feel like. Lala is going to. Lala is going to. Schwartz. This is going to happen. Like the way she is like. I do too. I love Schwartz. Last year. He was just bootleg housewife. You suck. You're horrible. I hate you. Slut shaming you. And now you're like. He's so outdoorsy. Why? Because he gets lost in Mexico and passes out on the beach. That's not outdoorsy because he has a Patagonia shirt. What are you? What is she talking about? I've only seen him intoxicated outdoors and make bad decisions and disappear and almost become a missing persons case in another country. What are you talking about? I feel like any did you get lobotomies that did, did, I did not understand what either of these two are saying. Lala has become like Brittany now. I cannot take her seriously. Loves weird sh like bugs and lizards. The bakes was look at him. Uh uh, I hate it. Why? Do you think they make like lizards? Don't worry, guys. That's all it takes to be a good dad. You have to like weird shit like bugs and lizards. Prozac or lizards annex? I think Tom Schwartz has some maturing to do before he. Is Thank you, Janet. Janet. Oh, Janet coming right back in with some actual logic. Oh, right. yeah. Oh. When I talk to him, he's a <laughs> sweet guy, but he definitely can wait. Schwartz. Oh, oh Michelle. Speaking the language, Naya, Nia, whatever her name is, I love her. Miss America was like, oh, he is not ready. <laughs> he is a baby man. He is still getting his butt wiped. He can't wipe other butts. Schwartz is exactly one year older than you. And yeah. he's, you know, one year and two days older than me. So I don't, yeah. I think that if he started now, he'd be a perfect time. I mean, I, I just started. I, I don't feel old right now. Too old to be a father is when you're so set in your ways. You have no patience. I'm basically saying what I am like right now. Father. <laughs> no patience. I like things done a certain way. I like them cleaned a certain way. And I think as you get older, you get more oh, stuck in, in yeah. your way of life, your way of doing things. Not being and, able to adapt. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. having a child breaks all of that. But sometimes in the best way possible. Things that need to be broken. Yeah, that's why my back hurts so Think bad. About it. <laughs> it feels more normal, I guess, to start later. I feel like in like the. It feels like Jason's like mm, I don't even like Jesse. Jesse a butthole. I don't like him, and I cannot believe that Schwartz is a year older than, or he's around Jason's age. And when they say a year older than Nia Naya's husband, I always forget his name. I'm, what's his name? Danny? Dan? Daniel? When they seem so much more responsible than Schwartz. 
Okay. Mim says Brittany is first generation, not to date a cut, not, not to date a cousin Mims. Chicken head PK Neely. Thank you for the super chat says I completely agree. Lala and Schwartz. It's weird. It is weird. It's weird. Like the millennial generation. Yeah. I'm Jason's 40 and you know, we just had our first and Jason's dad is in his sixties and just had another baby. We live in Los Angeles. So Jason's baby has an uncle that's his same age. Okay. Angeles, which is never, never land. It's such a goal oriented and dream chasing and, and youthful city. So I think it's different here. It's a little different here. People tend to wait a little longer. Yeah. Hang on to the youth more. Yeah. Never grow up. Peter Pan syndrome, problematic. Need women to do all the stuff for them. Don't want to call customer service. Can't pick up wads of hair off the floor. Going to be actors, models, whatever, like performers. I think if I would have stayed where I'm from, I would have had two or three kids by now. <laughs> yeah, I think when you move into the bigger cities, New York, LA, Miami. Probably six or seven wives. <laughs> you kind of tend to wait. Probably like 10 years earlier, maybe. Yeah, it, it, it's socially acceptable. <laughs> outcast if you don't have kids at 40. I don't know. Although the times are changing, let's be honest. Thanks, Bob Dylan. <laughs> so there is the executive producer, um, Alex Baskin Robbins, going, Thanks, Bob Dylan. You know, the times they are a changing. Mm -hmm. Baby men, yes, baby men. Man children need mommy to take care of them forever. Exactly. It's like, first of all, Schwartz, you should not be thinking about having a child. I don't care what anybody says. No, you have so much growing up to do. And Sandoval, don't you even impregnate anybody you nasty you nasty okay guys did we, we we watched the max and katie hook up after show did we watch the give her time did we watch the attempted dog list i don't think we watched the one about the attempted dog murderer okay let me pull that one up and if we've seen it let me know if we watched this one yesterday but i don't think we watched this one yesterday so let me bring that up here. Okay, here we go. My ex has on numerous occasions, almost more negligent than not when it comes to things like leaving doors open, doors unlocked, whatever. And he not only invaded my privacy by going into my room unauthorized and without my knowledge, but then he Hi, Amy. Good locked my dog in the room for three plus hours. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that she got to the emergency vet is because Anne had heard her upstairs and let yeah. her out. Like if I had a busier day and hadn't come home when I'd come home, who knows what would have happened because it, nobody would have seen anything. You called him a, a dog murderer. Attempted. The attempted dog murderer with eavesdropping. Attempted dog murderer. Thank you. He locked her in and as a dog would with leftover yeah. food, chicken wings, the bones, yeah. the smell, all that, she ate a lot of it. I didn't know it was Tom, I just knew it happened. Because yeah. he's not aware of his surroundings. Just the yeah. mirror. I think the question is- <laughs> Kristen said, I didn't know it was Tom, I just knew it happened. Um, she said, uh, it's because Tom isn't aware of his surroundings, just the mirror. <laughs> Kristen just read him and I love it. Okay. Is did he do it on purpose? Yes. I don't care. The more I think about it, he was just maybe he didn't think that Maya would get hurt, but he definitely wanted wants to piss off Ariana. So maybe he was hoping Maya would like wreck her room more than it's already wrecked when she's living in it, like a studio apartment, just to be as far away from him as she can until they figure out the house situation. And no, I just in that argument. And <laughs> yes, Kristen. I just, Kristen goes, I just think he's a moron. Yeah, he is. Thinks about himself only. And if I were mm -hmm. in her shoes, I probably would have said the same thing because she's pissed off at Tom. Mm -hmm. And he. Why does Kristen have more understanding for Ariana when arguably Kristen could still hate Ariana if she wanted to, but she chooses not to? And has shown quite a bit of empathy for her while the rest of these hoes who are supposed to be her friend are like, well, I think we should get look at Tom's perspective and maybe and it's like, what? But Kristen over here, oh, Doty is like, no, I would say the same thing. He's a moron. He's an idiot. Yeah. Wasn't thinking. 
So he very much could have killed Maya. It was either me or Anne that left the door open. Oh, Tom. Of course, of course, blame a woman. He's always a it was either me or Anne. It was you. It's you. It's your house. It's your dog. Anne can't do everything. You already have her doing too much. And I would love to know how much she makes because I guarantee you did not pay her enough because we heard from that other lady who was on the show as a bartender that you didn't even pay her for the bartending for your sexy singles party. And then she said she subbed a day as your assistant and you didn't pay her for that either. And someone else didn't. You didn't pay them. So now, allegedly, you have a history of not paying people. And don't start blaming Anne, you dirty monster. Uh, basically, okay, I, I don't so know. Let me I ask you this. If it was Anne, if Anne did it and she admitted to it, would she have called Anne a dog murderer? You dirty, dirty dickheads. Gonna blame Anne, who's probably barely making minimum wage. Anne's the one who saved the dog, according to Ariana. Anne's the one who heard Maya, who was in pain and sick, locked in Ariana's bedroom that Tom should have never opened in the first place or put a dog in a room like that with no access to water the bathroom not knowing if there were things in there if the room was dog proof and now you're gonna all blame ann mm -mm. no no probably not is the dog okay yeah. yes okay, Jax, nobody cares what you have to say nobody cares have you ever has he ever even kept a dog alive this guy oh god i ugh ugh I can't with Jax. He's just as gross as I remember. Dog's fine. That's all that matters. Maya, like, by the way, eats everything. Maya very often gets into things. She's eating laxatives. She's eating pillows, hair coloring. Like, I left. How is she getting access to all these things, you dumbass? Like, what is wrong with you? The fact that 400, and they were his, 400 organic laxatives. First of all, why do you have 400 organic laxatives? We know you're full of shit, Tom, but for real, that sounds like a problem. Yes, Shawnee, thank you so much for the super chat. Rotten hell. Rotten hell, Jax, with it. Blaming Anne. Are you guys crazy? Brittany, even Brittany's like, don't blame Anne. It's bear chase. Okay, no blaming Anne. Rotten hell. Thank you, Amy May. Good morning to you. Uh, oh my God, my husband coming through with the comments. The only dog Jax kept alive is himself. Hell yeah, hype man husband chill with the read. Ugh, these dudes are cuckoo. Paintballs. She ate paintballs? Why do you have paintballs sitting around where the dog is? What is wrong with these idiots? On the floor, and she ate. Why are you laughing? You're not doing yourself. Why don't you guys eat paintballs? Oh my god. I'm like Katie Maloney right now. Oh, go choke. Like, I'm so done with these idiots. Orange paintball. Paintballs. They taste like soap. I can't leave. Why would a paintball taste like soap? And how do you know what a paintball tastes like, you weirdo? Is he eating paint? This makes so much more sense now if Sandoval is eating paint. This makes this explains a lot if he's a paint eater. Leave soap on the floor. There's other on the floor. Like she ate paintballs and a perfect Italy country on the couch. <laughs> Literally, it looked just like Italy. She survived that. And then I he don't give a shit. Literally, no pun intended. But he doesn't. This guy sucks. I am so glad Maya is away from him. Oh, my God. And she has a new beautiful house. And right now she's in New York with Ariana and her, her bestie Brad. And it looks like Brad posts pictures of Maya on her, his social media. And he's, you know, with her. And Ariana's with her. And, ugh, yuck. Oh, these paint eaters. I can't. And then I bought, I went to CVS. I got some organic laxatives. Eight. And what is an organic laxative? Is it suppository? What? Huh? 400 laxatives. And Why? What in the Costco size? Why? I didn't even know they sold 400 laxatives. Unless you're at Sam's Club. <laughs> Every What's so funny, Jax? What's so funny? Where? Mind you, they were organic. Ariana wants to blame Sandoval. Oh, here we go. Lot. We need to take a little break before I hear Lala spouting off about this. This jealous lady, Pamela. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Appreciate you. These people, I can't. 
they are so ridiculous, these paint eaters. Maybe Lala is eating the same paint that allegedly Sandoval is eating because yuck, yuck. Organic laxative equals water. Thank you, Susie Q. That sounds about right. Why? I feel like, why are you abusing organic laxatives? <laughs> laxatives. Ugh. It's so uncool. So I don't know. Here comes Lala. Uh, lead. They have lead paint poisoning. They have lead poisoning. Maybe that's it. Here comes Lala in her infinite wisdom. Okay. Tell us more, La. And like, yes, he shouldn't have been in the room. Right? Mm -hmm. But like, I think that someone who is like clean and a grown person and also has done an advertisement for how to throw things away and take things to the trash, you should know how to do that. I can't wait to show you guys the picture of Italy. It would be funny if you weren't so envious and jealous. Like, what was the date? That's your friend? Get on that. July? And when I had dogs, did I leave stuff laying around? Yeah, I did. Heavy Jack, well, when I had dogs, did I leave stuff laying around? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. Lots of cocaine, allegedly, and all women used condoms that weren't used with Brittany. Allegedly. Allegedly. And here's Tom looking for the picture of his dog crapping because he has poisoning from eating all these laxatives and paint that allegedly the Toms are eating too. Having a child is like, you know, I have to be careful of every single thing I do in life, for even food, whatever. God knows he gets something in his mouth or he walks through a door. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did Jack just say, he's talking about being a dad. He's like, yeah, I mean, I, I when I had a dog, I didn't give a shit because whatever. But now I have a kid, so I have to like care because you know, God forbid he like, you know, put something in his mouth or walk through a door. What do you mean walk through a door? What is he, a ghost? Why, why would... <laughs> What do you mean walk through a door? How, what? Is that happened? I feel like that's happened. Because why would you bring that up? Did your son walk through a door, Jax? Why is he walking through a door? What's going on? I feel like that's something he would do, like a glass door, Jax would, when he's drunk. I didn't see that there and break his nose for the 50th time. But I I don't know. I've known lots of parents. I have parents. And I've never once heard them reference, oh, it's got to be make sure these kids don't walk through the door. You mean like come home? Like Come into your home? What is... Sir, put the paint down. Uh, no, no. But before I had a kid, yeah, I left my shit everywhere. I don't care if the roles were reversed. I'm going to say it is not the fault of Ariana for leaving something in her locked room that her dog is in there. No. Just Thank you, Kristen. Yeah. It's not the fault of Ariana for leaving something in her locked room that her dog is not in, nor should be in. Just be aware that there's food out and there's a dog in your house. It's really not that hard if you're thinking about someone other than yourself. Don't want the animal in the room with the food. I love that Kristen just gets that Sandoval only thinks of himself. She's like, yeah, he only thinks of himself. So of course he's not gonna think about the dog. Yeah. And she just continually seems to be supportive of Ariana when again, arguably she doesn't have to be because they didn't start on good terms. She could still hate Ariana, but she chooses to be like, you know what? I understand that this dude He's a dickhead. And so I'm going to support all the ladies who are victims of this dickhead. Food out. That's that. I mean, no. Yeah, maybe don't leave your food out. I mean, I'm very OCD and I do not eat in my bed. So like. Shocker. For me, if Brock okay, don't leaves either. a candy wrapper next Dude, to. Dude, Brock looks like he fucking pounds Chipotle burritos in bed. Okay. He just strikes me as that type. Brock's like, got to carve up, you know, before the big, I don't know swimming polo bungee meat. I don't know what he does before the big koala race. He's got a, I got a car. Uh, Brock definitely has got crumbs in the bed, crumbs in the crack. You know what I mean? Next to his bed. Oh, I will lose my answer. And get that. Like, that's just me. Regardless, Tom should have messaged her. He never should have entered her room without her permission with their current setup. I do not think Either person obviously did anything on purpose. Is it? Italy. God, it is Italy. There's the boot. One thing about Maya, she's definitely an artist. This dude doesn't give a shit. Literally. He's like, <laughs> one thing about Maya, she's definitely an artist. He thinks he's funny. He's funny. Right? 
<laughs> relevant photon says OCD isn't about being a clean freak. Mm, no, not necessarily. There's lots of, if you ever dealt with OCD or OCD patterns or checking patterns, it's, I know in my past I have had bouts of OCD. I had like, um, superstitious OCD things, which manifested really strangely. Um, and we're not fun by the by, but I think people kind of you overuse that now where everyone's like, I'm just OCD because you like things clean. But I do think Sheena has um, opened up about having some real um, obsessive compulsive thoughts and things. So, um, but it doesn't surprise me also that she would be upset when Brock's like, hey, I'm just eating some stuff in the bed. And he just grilled up a little bit of kangaroo. It's very tender. Mm, nom nom. First I fought it. And then it watched me orgy. And then I ate it. Okay. Too far, Jolene. Too far. All right. Um, the last thing we will watch, unfortunately, is apparently Bravo has decided, and maybe they've been doing this for a while. I just didn't know, but they've been doing this um, like Bravo hot mic. And Alex Baskin Robbins, the executive producer, who I don't know if we need to blame him. Is he ruining the season? Is whoever's in charge? Um, he is interviewing people. And he did that infamous interview with Sheena, where she was like, it's just like Ariana was cheated on, but like, what about me? You know, I just I need time to grieve. And you're like, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, who? And now he has talked to the Toms. And I think, you know, Tom Sandoval has done so many interviews that have just been awful because he is Tom. And so I think they're like, oh, come on here. We'll make you sound not so narcissistic and douchey. And it didn't work. Even his boss could not regulate him, could not. So let's take a listen. This is just, I think, like seven minutes from it because we can't listen to the whole episode or we will all want to scratch our eardrums out but uh i just added some filters to this like it's news program so if you're wondering why does it look like a news program because that's what jolene decided to do with it and uh tom again uh just blames women for his problems just he doesn't like women it's pretty clear uh so let's take a listen to what tom has to say which i think we all know because he's been saying the same bullshit um yeah. And then it just like happens and you're just like, holy, like I'm looking back on it. I'm just like, I'm still in disbelief, like how that could just happen. Um, how would you handle it differently now? Let's say that it had happened and let's say that you develop feelings, someone else when you're in the middle you know, of a relationship, what would you do differently at that I mean, point? I think I was so wrapped up too in trying because obviously I care for Ariana. So, I'm so I was so wrapped up in trying to have the most perfect breakup. Like I looked at like Tom and Katie's break up and I was like it's so, I, like I want it to be even better even more like whatever and I think I was wrapped up on trying to do things perfectly and then also it got to a point too where like subconsciously I'm like delaying the inevitable because I'm delaying the hurt that's going to come and I think you know looking back and people always say it you know like said it to me so many times like can't even begin to count but like you should have just broke up with her you should have just broke up with her but it's like obviously when you're in it and you've been with somebody it's the longest relationship by far by like double that i've been in so you know when you're with somebody for nine years you know they it's like they're, they're kind of like family you know in a sense and and it was i, I it was just hard to like to, to, to go through with that to try to like i mean i was doing this process like trying to make it perfect but i should have just just pulled the trigger and done it and i Okay, 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 okay. We're like a minute 17 in. <laughs> How are you trying to make it perfect, a perfect breakup when you're cheating on her with her friend behind her back and having a torrid, sordid affair and banging in the bed when she's mourning her grandmother out of town and then banging in uh, her uh, Volkswagen when she's mourning the death of your dog and her dog, Charlotte? How, how 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 do you how in your little little baby mind do you think it's going to be a perfect breakup? What's a perfect breakup? What are you even saying? And the fact that you say it's hard because this is like the longest relationships I've had by double. You're like 90, bro. Nine years is blip, nothing for someone as old as you, sir. Oh my God, I've almost been married 10 and with my husband a lot longer than that. Like, shut up. It's not a novel thing. Like he's actually, you guys don't understand. Most people have been with their significant other longer than that. Okay, not everybody. 
but it's not like, wow, nine years. Like that's almost like no, he acts as though no one could understand that. And then he has the gall to say, she's like family. That's how you treat your family, Tom. I mean, well, we kind of know because you still owe your mom all that money from her retirement when she was a hard working firefighter. And you were like, can I get $250,000 for my crappy bar that I'm not even going to show up at? I'm just going to go sing karaoke. Thanks. Bye. That's how you treat your family, Tom. Wow. <laughs> this guy like is worse and worse. I should have uh, backed off when I felt feelings and really, really like really tried to get to the root of where those are coming from. And like, you know, if they're just like for this person. They're coming from your boner. They're coming from your ball set. You got an erection, Tom, and you used it. That's where the feelings came from, from your bot, from your dick. Your dick went whoop, and then you went, eh, eh. that's that's it. Very simple, Tom. Okay? This isn't like freaking Five Goes West. This isn't like a great love story. I don't know why I think Five Goes West is a great love story. I don't know. That's the first thing that came to my mind. I need to read more books, watch more things. But, sir, please. Person or the need to feel loved, like, because I was. It's all about time. The need to feel loved. Are you lovable? Are you worthy of love? I don't know. Not behaving like that, sir. I think Ariana loved you. Look at all she put up with. All of that. All of that. The weird hair through the years. The, you know, cyst male energy when you're like, because I'm a cyst male. The yelling that you did. Your aggression. Your bad business deals. Your alleged bad smell. I mean, she dealt with a lot, Tom. Because I was lacking so much love. I was yearning for it. Oh, so yeah. Ariana's fault because she's a bitch. That's immediately where he goes. She's a bitch. Yep. I I, I got her to fill my love tank like Vicky Gumbelson. Because like I was lacking it because Ariana was such a bitch to me. That's why I stayed with her for so long and loved her. And even though we could watch the show and see that I was the dick in the relationship. Ah. Oh. <laughs> that bitch and so when i got it i was yearning for that like admiration that like okay admiration that's what you're yearning for you want someone to admire you tom oh this guy does not know how to have a healthy relationship whatever the girl who's dating him now the woman whatever her name is leonardo dicaprio's ex-girlfriend from a while back run girl run you got to admire him. You got to kiss his ass. You got to tell him he looks good. You can't be better than him. You can't be smarter than him. You can't challenge him. You got to go, ah. That's why he liked Rachel Raquel because she was like, ah, ah, until she wasn't. Even Rachel Raquel got too smart for this guy. In in, in my life and uh, that I wasn't getting. And so when I got. Look at Al Alex. Abort mission, Alex. It's not working. You know you're not this dumb, Alex. You're a smart man. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this, Alex? Alex, you got to read like the feminine mystique or something. You got to do something, Alex. This isn't good, Alex. Even Alex is like, oh, fuck. I really thought I could help him. Oh, I really thought I could pass this one off. Fuck. He is an idiot. Yes, Alex. Yes. All those feelings you're having, all the doubt, all the guilt, those are normal because you've been trying to help that guy. That's Tom Sandoval, Alex. And you knew it, Alex. Baskin Robbins case. You knew it, Alex. Alex, this is going to keep you up for the rest of your life. Come on, Alex. I got it. I just was like, it, it became in intoxicating to me. So you set the very low bar for. She was my drug. Breakups. Uh, yeah. what, do you, what do you think of that? What do you, what do you make of uh, referencing your breakup? Um, well, I think there was a compliment somewhere in there because we did really handle our breakup uh, maturely. Um, as far as it, yeah, she sat me down. She told me very frank, and she, she and she, you know, she listed the reasons why. And it was such a healthy, productive, although very sad conversation, heart wrenching. But it was it was um, pragmatic and like honestly, it was it was as good as a a divorce can be after ten years together. Oh no, that third that was by that time it was twelve years we had been together. Were you surprised when she sat you down for that conversation? Um. I mean, it ripped my heart out, but I knew it was, I knew she was right. I knew it was the right decision. Um, but just, we had that, we built this beautiful life together and we'd put so much work, you know, me and Katie Maloney were a slow burn. It wasn't necessarily like that love at first sight whirlwind romance. It was like a slow burn and we put a lot of work into our relationship. We I'm sorry, when? 
Uh, Jen, thank you for the super chats. It's so LA to abuse organic laxatives, right? Because they're organic, according to Jack. So it's just like, mm, just shit until you're thin and you get that part. Uh, thank you, Jen. Jen says, his perfect breakup meant getting away with an affair, dumping Ariana while blaming her, only to show up with Rachel as his girlfriend celebrated. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Like Ariana was going to be like, you go, guys. I'm rooting for you two kids. <laughs> Did you guys wash the sheets when you were banging on them when I wasn't there and I still thought I was with you and then we had sex? Did we do it on the same sheets? Okay, just checking. I'm so happy for you guys. Like, like, like. And Schwartz with, I mean, the revisionist history from the Toms. It's like slow burn. Slow burn. Oh, my God. He is like a manic pixie whatever uh, that um, trope was in the 90s. Like every female character in movies was uh written like a manic pixie dream girl or whatever like that's how he's at he's just like i'm like where is he going with anything what does any what do any of schwartz words mean they mean nothing <laughs> we've been through so much at that point and even now i could still probably spend the rest of my life with her but I don't please stop it's what you you divorced tom stop tom stop it when like last episode when he's like, let's hang out. And she's like, I don't want to hang out with you. You're my ex-husband and you didn't respect me when we were married. You cheated on me. And then you said you wanted to stay friends. And I was like, maybe. And then I just had one simple rule. And it was, don't date in the friend group. And then you did. And then I banged your friend. And now somehow, you know, you think you got me. You didn't. I don't know how happy we would be. Um, Probably not very happy because you divorced. But... I knew it was the right decision, but um, it was a jagged pill to swallow. Okay, Alanis Morissette, calm down. You know, we still lived together for three months afterwards because yeah. we had to do some renovations in the kitchen, and we still had a good time. Like, we would still get, like... Mm, I would want to hear from Katie on that one. Postmates together, watch movies, but, um, you know... Like, Katie got Postmates. Katie was watching a movie, and you're like, what are you doing? Because huh? we saw you have boundary issues, too. Remember when she's like, go away, Schwartz, leave me alone. They're in Mexico, and then he was, like, eating off her plate. Uh... Don't get me wrong. I spent a lot of time crying up in the depression chamber, as I used to call it. Um, <laughs> and Dude, um, I'm sorry to laugh. <laughs> Interesting. Mr. Mental Health Crisis is laughing at Tom Schwartz talking about a mental health crisis and depression. I guess that's it's funny to Sandoval. But you all must be friends with Tom again or he'll hurt himself. Yeah. And, and, and also once I transitioned, into, I just was I just I transitioned. I was like I was in my dream house, the dream girl, like everything for a while there felt almost perfect. Um, I felt like I was really thriving and, um, I took, I don't think these guys know what thriving means. <laughs> this took some major steps backwards. Look at Alex's face. He's just like his face. Like it literally, I wish I could zoom in. Cause he's staring at the Toms like, yep, Alex. Yep. These are the guys you want to create a redemption tour for. These are who you think the stars are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Alex. Yep. But like maybe three, four steps backwards, but I'm about to take five or six steps forwards again so yeah i guess I'm, I'm poised for uh a bounce back but man i was like two years of basket case i've never gone through two years of fucking being such a sad sack of in my life before you were you were in a second well i was pretty just a sad man uh but um but it's like we said i mean there was a lot all the way around and you know you were processing yeah. all of that i was yeah. trying to do the like over a period of months like slow breakups you guys loved each other but it was not at that point a I was trying to do like the slow breakup, like where you get to fuck her friend and get all the organisms. And then when, you know, you decided, um, but I'm still going to fuck her sometimes too. I'm going to have a little sex with her, mostly sex with Rachel because we connected on a level that was admiration for me. And then when Ariana stopped giving it up completely, then I was going to break up with her. And now Alex Baskin Robbins is going to come in here and try to, you know, paint the picture like, but you guys weren't happy, right? So, and we saw it too. <laughs> Healthy, good relationship. It wasn't. Um, they're just Alex, knock it off. This was a very big disconnect. Um, I felt like, you know, when we would be around each other, it was just for show. It felt acty. It felt like, yeah, like you're my homie, but like. Well, yeah, because you were fucking her friend. You were cheating on her. So that acty would be coming from you. The call is coming from inside the house, Tom. Like, obviously, the chemistry was just gone. Um, just...
So much so that he still slept with her. Yeah, just like Ariana told us. And he's like, oh, t-shirt sex, though. Oh, God. Different friends. Like, we would go out and just complete. Well, she can't be friends with your mistress, you know, even though she was. <laughs> but different friends. I mean, sounds like she wanted to go to bed at a reasonable hour and you wanted to stay up and... My guy wants to snorty all the time, snorty all the time, snorty all the time. Allegedly, obviously, everything I say is true, except for the parts that are false. Everything is alleged for entertainment purposes only. Come on, guys, be real. Completely split up and yeah, it just was not positive. And I found myself in a very bleak place where I was- Not bleak. Oh my God, you poor man. Oh, you're the first guy ever to go through a midlife crisis and act horribly and let your dick take over. <gasps> it's like, is this the rest of my life? There's so many things going on. Where <laughs> is this the rest of my life with a hot, smart woman in a great house when I want to fuck a 28-year-old who can't speak in public? Ugh. Oh, Tom, you're just like the worst. The worst. Someone commented on one of my videos recently and they were like, Jolene, it just seems like your hate for Tom Sandoval is really personal. Yep. I don't like him. Sorry, I don't like misogynists. I don't like people like this. I don't like big lying, cheating, gaslighting, narcissist assholes. So yeah, I get it. If that's personal, I personally, I don't like that. No, we're a good team in the sense of like, like work together well. And like, we have all these things that we've built. Like this is the most, you know, we've built our lives up together. We came up together in that sense. And I came to a, just a realization, you know. What did you come up in? You've never come up. You're just you're still at the basement level. Ariana has a come up. You don't have a come up. There's no up. It's all lateral or down or straight to hell. And the way he talks about this is so on brand for the brand he was talking about with Rachel Raquel and one of her, her latest podcast episode when her PR person was saying this man was Rachel was like in the hospital or, you know, the in, wherever she was, the some people call it the spa, some people call it mental health facility and doing therapy and stuff. And he was like, what about but our brand, my brand? And Rachel's publicist was like. I can't believe this man is talking about his brand. And now again, he's talking about his freaking brand. So he was more worried about losing money in deals than he was about hurting the person he said he loved and was with for 10 years. Okay. I need the love, like the real love. And Oh my God, Mary J. Blige. Real love. I'm searching for a real love. Bitch, you don't deserve a real love. Okay? Because you're not real. And I think Ariana was just like, nope, this is what it is. She had come to that conclusion that, that she was okay with that. We had as production inklings of what things really were between you guys, but you guys were- Everybody like, close to us yeah. saw saw the, the reality. Everybody knew that I was unhappy and obviously it's okay that I fucked Rachel Raquel for seven months and lied. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Everybody knew, right? We're unhappy. That's what you do. <laughs> you cheat. You don't break up. It's too hard. They're like family. You just keep them hanging on until they find out in a very embarrassing way and are humiliated on television. Duh. That's the breakup. Reality of it. They yeah. all saw it. Now, do you think that it was real? Do you think that it was about the relationship with Rachel? Do you think that it was, you're saying, seeking something that you weren't getting mm -hmm. in your relationship with Ariana? Oh, then that commercial happened as I was screen recording <laughs> for a video game. I think it was all of it. I really do. Like, you know, I, we spent... A ridiculous amount of time like it's embarrassing to say and then so he's like do you think your love for Rachel Raquel was real I think it was real we spent so much time together yeah you were cheating she was your mistress she was your hoe on the side you were her hoe on the side yeah what no people don't but we spent so much time together like talking and probably not talking about anything interesting definitely not reading or public speaking probably just saying like 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 doing shrooms and watching lights on the ceiling getting to know each other we knew everything about each other and very, it was a very safe, accepting place. She was your in my safe space. Oh, gross. And very positive. Alex. In a lot of ways. Alex, Alex, look at your face. Alex, yes, yes, yes. Alex, this is bad. You're creating and perpetuating these monsters. Yep, Alex. Yep, that face you have right there. Follow that. Follow that. Don't try to talk yourself out of it, Alex. This is a shit show that you are now directing. A lot of ways. I know that's, I feel that. Alex like, all right, 
He, uh, I've been giving him softballs. I've been setting him up. You know, it's just do the layup. Boop, 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 alley oop. And he keeps missing. But that connection was real. But I feel that the extent that we were like around each other was a little bit uh, like becoming an, like it became an escapism too. So it initially was one thing and then it grew into something else. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the feelings we, I mean, I would have done at one point, I mean, I would have done anything for her. You know what I mean? Like for real, like anything. Except for be with her without having a girlfriend, except for allow her time to stay at Mar not Maribel, wherever she was, her treatment center and get better. Because according to Rachel Raquel and according to you, you were mad that she wanted to stay and get more treatment. You're like, you gotta be out here with me. We got a brand. Duh. So you do everything for her except encourage her uh, to be on a mental health journey. Mm -hmm. And Schwartz, I, obviously. He's like, I'd do anything for her, but for her baby door. Oh, great. Schwartz, what's he going to say? Tough to be party to this. And <laughs> I know we're not, I mean, we can or can't get into the time. I didn't really care. Yeah. But but I just, I, it's been you beaten to death and whatever. Guess what? I care, Alex, basket case. I know, I know they're like, oh my God, I don't even care about the timeline. I do. I do. I still care about the timeline. We've been lied to so much by the Toms. I want a I want a specific timeline for this. I want it all or nothing at all. It's like my, I get brain rot when I think about it because it just was such an it's such not a substantial moment in my personal life. Right. But it just also completely overshadowed. Also, why Ariana doesn't want to be your friend? It just wasn't substantial to me in my personal life. I didn't give a shit. I don't everything in my life, which is a weird, just like replaying in my mind, you know. And also in the process of him cheating with Rachel Raquel, you hurt Katie quite a great deal. Someone you said you still respected and could spend the rest of your life with it. Just, you know, it wouldn't be perfect, but you could probably be together, you know, forever. Someone you loved and want to be friends with, but you hurt her in the process by pretending to have this Rachel Raquel love affair, knowing that it was going to hurt her. And you still, I mean, throw them away. Short's kind of closed off. Like I just maybe I had a callous indifference or not, but sporadically, you know, I, I would interject and intervene and be like, "You." Gotta sporadically, when I was traveling with him, with my girlfriend Joe Wenberg at the time, and we were in Big Bear on a couple's trip, sporadically, I'd be like, "You know what, man? Maybe you should break up with your girlfriend." Yeah, let's just enjoy this couple's trip with your mistress and my new lady. I mean, yeah, dude, it was, what the f going on? This is going yeah. on too far. Yeah, like you need to tell. Like, anyways. What do you think would have happened sliding doors moment? Let's say that this wasn't discovered until yes, after our reunion. Sandra, exactly. Then what? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I actually had planned. I had a planned session with my therapist that in two days to basically go through everything because there's no way. And I got so close so many times to telling Ariana, but like, it's like I, I would be like, well, I would have to like ask Rachel. I'd be like, are you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, because we're both involved in this, you know, so. You had more respect for your mistress than you did your girlfriend. You had to ask your mistress before you told your girlfriend you were cheating on her. Did you just say, that's what he just said. You guys, this is what he, this man is not grown. He's a baby. Everyone should dislike him. Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> that is so up that he's like, well, I mean, I have to ask Raquel. No, you don't have to ask Raquel. Your responsibility lies in the relationship and the commitment you made. You tell Ariana. Well, I gotta see if my mistress, if my hoe on the side is okay with me uh, telling the old girlfriend about it. He just wants to pass the buck. And it's, again, passing the buck and blaming another woman. Rachel Raquel wasn't cool with it, so I just couldn't dump her. You know, I couldn't hurt her. You know, how many women do you want me to hurt, you guys? God! <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you said that. I mean, close I close so many times to telling Ariana, but, like, it's like, I, I would be like, well... I would have to like, ask Rachel, I'd be like, are you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, cause we're both involved in this, you know? So, and I wouldn't get an answer. I'd be feeling it in the moment. And I'm like, that's not just me. Like I have to take into consideration her, like before I open this door. And I actually had a planned session with her and my therapist. Uh, like literally I just that night before I did a therapy session in my friend, Jason's car, our band manager, cause we performed that night at TomTom. Tom. I was in not his car and had a therapy Jason. session with my therapist and we were discussing like, okay, this is when it's happening. This is when it's happening. So. Yeah, so the, I mean, the idea was to take care of it and just never got there. Yeah, pretty excited. For yeah, Alex, yeah. The idea was to take, you just never got there. It's just, uh, just kind of two ships passing in night. What are you talking about? He had seven months to a year or however long this affair was to tell his girlfriend. Alex, you just, you just never got there. Yeah, totally understandable. Oh my God, worst interviewer. Alex, 
seriously. <laughs> I expected more from you. Insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. These two. I can't even give them the insanity excuse because insanity is like a legitimate thing. They're not insane. They're just assholes. They're just assholes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ugh. It's Sendable's a liar. Sendable's a liar. Oh, so he's considerate. And that's why he couldn't tell. Yes, Justine. He's a nice, considerate man. It's Ariana's fault for getting in the way. You know, she was just like, Ugh, such a bitch and girlfriend. It's Ariana's fault for loving him and being there and wanting to go to therapy and make it work. What a bitch. Oh my God. I do not know how AMJ Ariana did this for 10 years. I, I don't, I honestly don't. I mean, I can look back at relationships I've had and I don't know how long I, how I stayed as long as I did, but oh God, it's horrible. It's horrible. Horrible, horrible. Clinging to delusion. Yes. Loving the likes. Yes. Keep smashing the likes, you guys. All right. We are at two hours and 40 minutes. I've had so much fun with you on this Friday night for a late night, Friday night live. No offense, all offense. Um, don't forget to comment after the video posts because I don't get to get to all of your comments. And uh, I like to hear from you guys and what you have to say. And it does help in the algorithm as well. But I do love reading your comments. So please comment away. Smash that like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you have friends who love Vanderpump, pop culture, comedy. Send them my channel. We're on our way to 40K. So thank you so much. And shout out to my super chatters tonight. Pamela, Desiree, I hope you're having a wonderful birthday. Sasswatch, thank you so much. Jen, thank you so much. Jen Noel, 2013. Linda Devlin, my friend Mims, aka Make It Make Sense. If you guys aren't sub to Mims, I mean, he has like 150, he's over 150,000 subs. He is killing it, especially with his Diddy coverage amongst other things. So shout out to Aminzi. Chickenhead PK Neely, thank you so much. Shawnee, thank you. Amy May, who's up in the UK. Good morning to you. I still got to go to bed. I still have to eat dinner. It's 10 o'clock at night here. What am I doing with my life? I'm living like a Tom. Pamela, Jen Noel 2013 again. And Jen Noel, you are so appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Um, who was in the chats participating. Um, I love hearing from you guys. Follow me on social media. If you haven't already, I'll be back with more videos tomorrow. So make sure you uh, smash the bell so you get notified when I go live and post new content. And like I always say, you're beautiful pumpkin spice babies. Take care of yourselves and always remember to enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Bye. If you like what you